seconds and a Thousand Island sauce. For the next big thing in burgers, go to Wendy's and do what tastes right. There comes a time when you're ready to move on to something better. Like the golden rich flavor of Miller Genuine Draft. It's beer, grown up. The all new Acura RDX with real time traffic. Karen Jordan, weekends on ABC 7 News. Welcome everyone to Columbus, Ohio on the banks of the Olentangy and they are ready to cook. That aroma that you smell is one of anticipation and expectations. Why not? They have good reason to be that way because they have a Quasar at quarterback. His name is Troy Smith. Welcome. Dr. Pepper's college football kickoff weekend on ABC. Over 104,000 on hand here at Ohio Stadium. All of them looking at this one between Northern Illinois out of the MAC and Ohio State with that lofty number one ranking to begin the season. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie. Stacey Dales joining us in just a few moments. Welcome aboard. And hey, Ohio State comes into this game, partner. 10 and 2 last season on the heels of a very successful season won their Fiesta Bowl game but here they're thinking about a lot more a national championship and I think if they're going to think national championship the offense is going to have to take them there this might be the most potent Ohio State offense to ever line up in Columbus a big talented offensive line a 1300 yard rusher in the backfield and two bona fide Heisman Trophy candidates at the skill positions one of those candidates Troy Smith we all know what he can do with his feet. He's very dangerous on the run. I think it's going to be his ability to pass the football, especially when he breaks the pocket, that's going to dictate whether this team will be playing in the second week in January in Arizona. So riding on his feet and on his arms, one of the biggest improvements of any quarterback in the country over the last 12 months. Meanwhile, when you look at the other side of the field, Northern Illinois out of the MAC, a conference used to pulling off a big upset every once in a while. Hey, they're used to playing on the big stage. Last year started the season up in Michigan and showed well for themselves, probably because of that guy in the backfield. That's right, Garrett Wolf, the top returning rusher in the country. He went into Michigan, ran for 148 yards, ripped off a 76-yard touchdown run, and then the following week against another top-notch Big Ten opponent, Northwestern, he ran for 245 yards. This guy can get it done against talent. I don't think he's starry-eyed coming into Columbus this afternoon. They're ready to go. Both teams ready to plant their feet, stand tall, and be strong. Football season kicks off today in Columbus, where Ohio State is strong enough to have earned the number one ranking in the nation. Led by a trio of offensive dynamos, the Buckeyes have their sights set on a national championship. Coming right up, we'll be checking in with our New York studio crew. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Every time I see her passing by, all I do is hang my head and cry. The totally new Jeep Compass. With 30 miles per gallon on the highway, it's freedom in a whole new dimension. I've trained for this my whole life. I cannot fail. I will not fail because I am one with a can. <laughs> Dr. Pepper has given you a shot at a million dollars, but first, you gotta get past me. Log on to ESPN.com, keyword pepper. Beat me at College Pick'em, and you could be passing for the million live at the Big 12 and ACC Championship game Saturday, December 2nd on ABC. This is the slide line, and it's connected to the angles. Hey, Dad, can I help? Not right now, Jake. This is a grown-up job. Okay. Here. 
Hey, buddy. Want to hold the flashlight for me? Okay. What's that? It's a supply line. Supply line? This is an angle stop. Supply line is... Your SUV is designed to go off-road, but sometimes the off-road comes to you. Introducing the new Goodyear Forterra with silent armor technology, made with SUV drivers in mind. A layer made with Kevlar means the Forterra is tough and rugged, and extra cushioning means the Forterra rides quietly and comfortably. The new Goodyear Forterra with silent armor technology. Go confidently on the wings of Goodyear. This is ESPN on ABC. John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. Hey. First time in 35 years you're not strapping on the pads. How does it feel? Great to be back around college football. That's how it feels. It's like he was going, waiting for that police escort into the studio. But I didn't get it. We got in a yellow cab and we were here. <laughs> no police escorts for us here. All right, what's going to stand out the first week of the season or for the entire season? Well, a lot of questions. You know, we're trying to find answers to these questions. We've had a chance to watch the University of Texas. Colt McCoy at quarterback looks solid today. Defense played, dominated the game. We'll get a chance, like for Ohio State, Doug, to see what things Tro go on defense. Troy Smith on offense for them. Their defense is a question mark. They're a highly touted team. Next week, they got 10. Texas early, yeah. it's going to be a great year. Yeah. Yeah, you talked about Colt McCoy, and that's a good reason why, because he's replacing Vince Young, remember. That's a big factor, and a lot of people still think he can get to the championship game. He was pretty good today, Doug. Solomon is a rock. Three touchdown passes today. Of course, you got receivers like Sweet, and it makes life a lot easier no for you. Doubt. He's Those got... He, he has people around him. Receivers and running backs making quarterbacks oh, look good geez. again. It's a wonderful thing. <laughs> we're we're going to be listening to this thing. all year long. We'll see you at halftime. Enjoy the game. <laughs> Welcome everyone back to Ohio Stadium here on an overcast and breezy day here in Columbus. Ready for this one between Northern Illinois and Ohio State, ranked number one in the country. A look at the temperature, 62 degrees. It was raining earlier this morning, but has stopped since. Uh, stopped about an hour ago, and we are ready to go, as is that man, the head coach, Joe Novak of Northern Illinois, 60 years young, a former player back when Bo Schembechler was uh, coaching Miami, Ohio, and has really turned that program around during the last few seasons in the MAC. Jim Tressel telling me earlier that opening day is about finding out who you are and what you're going to be about. This is sixth season on the sidelines in Columbus. All he's done is won 50 games in the national championship and a couple of Big Ten titles too. Northern Illinois has won the opening kickoff. Ohio State actually deferred to the second half and we are ready to go. Marcus Perez back along with Britt Davis for the opening kick for the Huskies. This one five yards deep to Marcus Perez. And they'll start on their own 20, but first downstairs to Stacey Davis. Thanks, Mark. You know, it's no secret this Ohio State defense has a lot of holes to fill defensively. They lost nine starters, three to the NFL. But the one thing that everybody, even us, are overlooking is the fact that this defense has competed against the number one overall rated offense in the country every day in practice for the last four months. I talked to defensive foot coordinator Jim Haycock. He said the experience has been absolutely invaluable from a competitive standpoint. And he said this team is more talented perhaps than last year's guys. Yeah, it is rife with all Americans who haven't had a chance to play regularly yet. First down and 10 for the Huskies to start things off. A little up and out. And Horvath looking downtown. This one out of bounds. It'll be second and 10. Phil Horvath comes in with one of the highest completion percentages from a season ago as we take a look at the starters for the Huskies. One of the keys, the three guys up front in the middle, the two guards and the center. Eddie Adamski has not yet snapped in a game live action yet except for that first play. And they're going to need to be on the game today to free up Garrett Wolf in the backfield. There's Wolf. Second down and 10 for Northern Illinois. Out of the backfield, it's Wolf. Got a nice block, and Wolf has some room. Garrett Wolf with a first down out beyond midfield. Matt Brost gave him a nice kickout block and sprung him loose for a nice gain all the way to the Buckeye 49 yard line, brought down by Nick Patterson. Well, and Jim Tressel talked about finding out about his team early, especially his defense. 
And this is not a game where the Buckeyes can be looking ahead to next week against Texas. I mean, they love to bring pressure, Jonesy. And against that pressure, this Husky team is very good with their screen game. And they hit a big one on the screen outside to Wolf on that play. Here we go at first down and 10. And we have some flags down to the field. Doug Free moving prematurely for Northern Illinois. Oh, 62. Five yards. The down remains first. Doug Free, an All-American candidate, and he could be the highest drafted player ever to come out of Northern Illinois before it's all said and done. Here's a look at the defensive players for Ohio State. Freeman, Laurinaitis, and Kerr, the linebackers, replacing a stellar group in Carpenter, Schlegel, and Hawk. They are gone to the NFL. Wolf. Brought down to the 47-yard line by Marcus Freeman, the 6'2 sophomore, after a gain of about one on the play. Second down, about eight to go for Northern Illinois. Here's a look at our impact players. Wolf last year ran for some 1,600 yards plus, second in the country, 18 touchdowns. And Phil Horvath last season had his season truncated. He was injured nine games in, missed the last three, but won a very heated competition for the spot at the start of the year. Nice run that time by Wolf again across the 45. Brought down by Anderson Russell from his strong safety spot. So outside of Dave, that little blip, that penalty, looking pretty good so far in just four plays. And you can't come into Columbus and play sloppy at the line of scrimmage. Northern Illinois, they have a shot in this game, and they want to get in the fourth quarter with a chance to win this football game. They've got to play relatively error-free football. Can't start first and 15. And we're getting a nice look at Garrett Wolf and his talent on this opening drive. Third down and five. Horvath with a blitz coming off the edge, and they got to him. He's sacked back at the 46-yard line by Vernon Golston, the 6'4 sophomore. Just two returning starters defensively. We talked about it, but so many guys ready to make a name for themselves. Well, in Ohio State, as we talked about earlier, they love to bring pressure, especially in second and third and long situations. That time, a corner blitz from the boundary. Horvath failed to account from the, for the defender. Traditional Buckeye defense early. Andy Dittbenner is punting from his own 35, and look out for the lethality of number seven back there to Ginn, and they almost got to the punter. Ginn gets it at the 13. And you hear the stadium light up when he gets his hands on the football. Brought down to the 34-yard line. He will be one of the weapons in so many different facets of their offense today. And good starting field position after that 40-yard punt by Northern Illinois. Let's take a look at the starters offensively for the Buckeyes. So many key parts. Barton, one of them, on the offensive line. He's an all-conference candidate. And Antonio Pittman ran for over 1,300 yards a season ago for Ohio State. But they are very deep in the backfield. We'll see a number of guys at that spot today. Out of the shotgun on first and 10. Smith wide open. Complete down in the middle of the field to Brian Hartline. And it's first and 10 Buckeyes at about the 34-yard line. Smith comes out slinging. And you know, everybody talks about Troy Smith as a dual threat quarterback. What makes him special is he's a hell of a passer from the pocket. I mean, he's very settled with his feet. He's not afraid to hurt you in the short to intermediate zones. Nice ball on the seam route. Troy Smith led the conference last year in passing efficiency, first down and 10. They're going to give it to Pittman, going over the left side of that offensive line over Boone and Schaefer, brought down by Keenan Blaylark. He's one of the keys for that Husky defense, along with Ken West with great pressure off the edges. And Uchtick was the leading tack last year with 121 stops at his free safety spot for Northern Illinois. And this Husky defense undersized and really overmatched. They're going to have to hope for some sloppy handling of the football by Ohio State. May pick up a few turnovers here early. Second and four, a little draw to Pittman. Has the first down and then some down to the 17-yard line. Alba Hansbro, one of the two twins on the corners for Northern Illinois, making the stop. Antonio Pittman is going to be one of our impact players today, along with 
Ted Ginn Jr. and Troy Smith already those three making an imprint on this game albeit early Dave and it's very rare when you see an offensive team in college football have two bona fide Heisman Trophy candidates and I think that Antonio Pittman could very well be included in that group if you can say it he did have a, a quiet 1300 yards last year and he gets another call here Pittman this time brought down after a gain of about two on the play by Brad Benson for that very young and inexperienced defensive front for Northern Illinois but getting back to Pittman a little bit talked about his 1300 yards last year he was the only back that went for over a thousand in the conference last year that did garner all conference honors so sometimes you know players they like to find little things to motivate them real or not <laughs> and he comes into the season with a bit of a chip on his shoulder and he should you know he was overshadowed some by the spread offense and some of the talent at the other skill positions on offense for the Buckeyes second down and eight for Ohio State Smith finds Gonzalez wide open over the middle right at that first down marker the eight yard line Anthony Gonzalez ready to help replace the likes of Santonio Holmes who's gone on to the NFL and that's going to be a first down for Ohio State talked about Holmes now in the NFL mangled Sims Houston several key cogs missing this year on offense and Holmes and Mangold as you said first round picks they move on to the NFL Mangold the All-American at center first and goal for Ohio State on their opening drive Pittman plowing his way inside the five to about the three yard line never have enough good running backs Ohio State huh <laughs> well and they go very deep this year not only Antonio Pittman returning with that a thousand yard season a year ago but you got Maurice Wells and of course the top running back in the country the top recruit period in the country and Beanie Wells three tailbacks that can all be game breakers Mark Jones I, I, it, it's scary some of the talent <laughs> that this Ohio State team puts out on the football field here they go on second and goal gonna run a little option Smith stopped up and the Huskies do a nice job of stringing this one out that's gonna be a loss on the play back to the six yard line they ran it into the boundary well, a nice job rallying to the football by the Husky defense and that's going to have to be a focal point for NIU in this football game. They're going to have to swarm these skill position athletes for the Buckeyes. Very tough to tackle one on one and you see the pursuit. Defenders are going to have to get to the football if the Huskies are going to be in this football game late. We've looked at the two deep and there is a decided edge in size in favor of the Buckeyes in the trenches. Third and goal for Ohio State. Smith with a quick drop. Touchdown, Ginn. Well, Ginn started it with his nice punt return and he and Smith, the former high school buddies and teammates, finish it with a nice pass for a touchdown. The Buckeyes, with an auspicious beginning to the season, carrying that lofty number one ranking, and right now leading 7-0. Smith, Ginn, I have a sneaky feeling you'll be hearing that a lot this season. We'll be back right after this. There it is. Go get it. Ooh, I'm the salt. Let's go. I mean, let me take you through this thing. Look here. 85 on the left side, so everybody on the left really don't even matter. Who was 35? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he jumping at. Hold up. Pause for the calls. <laughs> Madden NFL 2007. Ready to eat for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. Jeeps on the New York Street, said he belts in it, Jeeps on the New York Street, said he belts in it, Jeeps on the New York Street, said he belts in it, Jeeps on the New York Street, said he belts in it, Jeeps on the New York Street. It's your life. Keep it moving. Introducing the totally new Jeep Compass for just 15985 
It's freedom in a whole new dimension. My little girl has been taken. I'll find her. They control the island. This is private property. You know her? I don't recognize this child. They've chosen the sacrifice. Whose desk is this, hmm? And now they've uncovered. You suspect foul play. The one man who can stop them. You need to leave here now. I can't. Hey, where is this girl? Nicholas Cage, The Wicker Man, rated PG-13, now playing at a theater near you. Why do you always get the front seat? Because I have higher education. What do you I mean? took honors classes. In high school. Hey, it's Bobby Bowden. I'm going to touch him. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. I'm still going to touch him. Part of Allstate Your Choice Auto Insurance. Are you in good hands? That wasn't him. Are you still touched him? Ohio State leading 7 to nothing. Dave, hey, they're not wasting any time out of the gate. Yeah, this is a great route by Ted Ginn Jr. He's going to start out with a fade move, looking over the inside shoulder, and then watch the out cut. This is a nice route by Ted Ginn Jr. and maybe a better ball from Troy Smith. And Troy Smith gets the ball out early, lays it right on the numbers. Did not give Alva Hansbro much of a chance as a cornerback. When the ball's thrown that well on that type of route, you got to say a prayer. <laughs> Ted Ginn, that's the 20th consecutive game with a catch. This is Perez on the kickoff return for Northern Illinois. And he's brought down shy of the 20-yard line by Jamario O'Neill. Also out of Glenville High School, and there's a look at Ted Ginn. I mentioned 20 straight games with a catch, the seventh touchdown catch of his career, with many more to come. Those two are on a special frequency. He and his quarterback, uh, Troy Smith, friends since their high school days, Glenville, Ohio, Glenville, Cleveland. What a great luxury for Troy Smith to be able to have Ted Ginn Jr., that deep threat, but also to be able to hit him underneath. He's learned to run his routes and such a threat after he catches the football. Now he came to Ohio State as a defensive back, still learning the wide receiver position. First down and 10. We'll see if the Huskies can counter here with something. A little draw play. Wolf made the first guy miss, but not the second one. Brandon Mitchell coming up from a strong safety spot to make the stop on Garrett Wolf. Well, and Phil Horvath, the quarterback for NIU, talked about 70% passing a year ago. Really took over the mantle for Stefan LaForce, who was a top percentage passer a year ago at Louisville. But Horvath is really going to have to have some success passing the ball down the field to loosen things up for Garrett Wolf. Second down and 12. Horvath. Incomplete, no flags on the play at the 35-yard line. Malcolm Jenkins broke up that pass intended for Britt Davis. Malcolm Jenkins, number two for the Buckeyes, is their best cover corner. Somebody they'll be able to really rely on in the secondary. And when the Buckeye defense brings heat, they usually do it in second and third and long situations. So the Huskies are going to have to get some things done on first and second down throwing the football, finding a way to protect Phil Horvath in the pocket. Yeah, they're going to have to stay out of third and long situations like this, too. 12 to go. Pressure coming off the edge. Horvath wisely threw it away. It was in the vicinity of Beal, but David Patterson, one of the two returning starters up front for Ohio State, providing the pressure. It's a three and out for Northern Illinois. comes the punting unit. Ohio State's defense with a lot to prove. Nine new members this year. Fourth down and 12 and Husky's going to punt. Dick Benner and Ted Ginn already with one touchdown early in the ball game, standing at his own 44. High snap. Gets over a line drive punt. It's going to take a bounce out to the 42-yard line. And once again, hey, the Buckeyes are going to start off with very good field position. Troy Smith going to take the reins of the offense one more time and lead him down the field, piling up some good numbers so far. We'll be back after this.
totally new Jeep Compass with fold flat passenger seats and a removable load floor. There's no end to the cool stuff you can take along for the ride. Jeep Compass, it's freedom in a whole new dimension. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shh. Put the little tortilla strips in it and make it crunchy. Well, don't let Dave hear. You know, he always has to be the fun guy. Oh, too late. Guys, keep it down. Honestly. <laughs> so unprofessional. Taco Bell's new Nacho Crunch Grilled Stuffed Burrito. Carne asada, warm nacho cheese sauce, and crunchy tortilla strips wrapped up and grilled to go. For the burrito that's fun to crunch. Crunchy. Wow. Think outside the bun. ESPN's College Football on ABC. Brought to you by Dodge. You can take life as it comes or you can grab life by the horns. Dodge. Singular, raising the bar. And Subway. Yumalicious sandwiches on fresh baked bread at Subway restaurants. Subway, eat fresh. Well, my father used to tell me you can't cook with cold grease. And right now, Troy Smith is heating them up, David Norrie, on offense. On first and ten, a little play fake. And he's going downtown and has a man. Ginn. Touchdown, Buckeyes. Again, 58 yards for that score. His second, albeit early in this game, with 6.38 to go in the first quarter. A perfectly thrown ball by Troy Smith. And 58 yards later, it is 14 to nothing for Ohio State. And you look outside playing one on one with help over the top. Ted Ginn Jr. is going to release. And then Alva Hansbro, number 11, cannot get over the top. And that is just pure speed. And Dustin Utchik has got to get over the top as a safety to help as well. Just a straight drop. Ted Ginn Jr., the most dangerous wide receiver in the college game. And you cannot lose track of him on the football field. Again, a beautifully thrown ball from Troy Smith. He rarely misses them when they're wide open down the field, Jones. Certainly not that time. He was right on the money. You can tell those two are on a special frequency, all of their own. Smith, Ginn, again and again. I have a feeling we'll be saying that a lot. And to think, the scary prospect, Dave, is that Ginn is still learning the position. Some of the nuances and intricacies of the passing game and running his routes but two catches two touchdowns 63 yards like clockwork here in Columbus Northern Illinois can't afford to give away too many points too early this one goes through the back of the end zone and we're going to start off at the 20 yard line but there's a flag down in the play at the 35 and remember folks there is a change this year that the kicking tees have been reduced an inch trying to create fewer backs and subsequently uh, speed up the game and have more kickoff returns. I mentioned the flag thrown at the, the 35 kick. illegal block number 24 off the returning team half the distance to the goal first down. I'm going to march it back to the 10 yard line and don't miss the premiere of Saturday Night Football Heisman hopeful Brady Quinn leading number uh, the Notre Dame uh, Fighting Irish in their quest for a national title against Georgia Tech tonight at 8 Eastern 5 Pacific Out of Dr. Pepper kickoff weekend on ABC college football lives here first down and 10 
They hand it off to Wolf, and he is bottled up. Back at the eight yard line. Well, the opener is looking a lot like the Fiesta Bowl a year ago, the Troy Smith to Ted Ginn Jr. show, and the Buckeyes defense holding up well. And we've talked about the losses. And the two returning starters inside, Patterson and Pitcock. And those two tackles inside have really been leading the charge. They've been stiff against the run early. Second down and 12. Horvath, plenty of time, and sacked back at the three-yard line by Golston. Well, they suffered a lot of losses to the NFL, but this defense intransigent and stout so far. Look at this impressive list. Several of them, David, first-round draft choices, too. Yeah, you look at the first-round draft choices, Hawk, Carpenter, and, of course, Dante Whitner. All three going in the first round of the NFL, five total in the first four rounds of the draft. But you know Ohio State. They got talent to fill in, and they are putting a lot of talent on the field in this 2006 edition defense. We're going to hope to speak with A.J. Hawk during the afternoon via telephone. Third and 17. They hand it off to Wolf, running east-west. Turns it up and gets his shoulders squared at the 10-yard line. Anderson Russell finally pushing Wolf out of bounds. The second consecutive three and out for Northern Illinois offensively. And this is danger time. I mean, this is this is a 9-1-1 situation for Northern Illinois. You talk about all you the talent. You think so this early? Oh, what <laughs> talent that Ohio State puts on the field at offense. You're giving them a short field. You give Troy Smith, Ted Ginn Jr., and some of these other guys offensively that are also game breakers for the Buckeyes, and it can be a short afternoon for you. Ginn is standing at his own 48-yard line. There was a high snap last time that Dick Benner did a nice job to handle. And this one is shanked. And I mean shanked, folks. Ted Ginn has two catches for two touchdowns already. The mercurial star for Ohio State going to get another chance on offense when we come back. The meter's still running, folks, because there's a flag on the field. We're going to stay right here, but you would think they're going to send the offense back onto the field and take it from the 20. And things couldn't start any worse for Joe Novak and his Northern Illinois team. And he knows his team is hanging from a limb right now. Troy Smith on his offense looking to get the ball back. They hand it off to Pittman. And Pittman makes it down to the 17-yard line. Brought down by Mark Reeder, starting strong safety. Let's go down to Stacy for more on the Husky defense. You know, guys, the Huskies players told me that they can't blow plays, they can't miss coverage, and they can't make mistakes. And Elva Hansbro just got in the face of all his defensive teammates and said, we can't make a mistake. You blew your coverage. He called his teammates out. They've got to clean it up here. It's going to get ugly, guys. Yeah, Hansbro uh, with his twin brother, the cornerbacks, Key part of their defense. Second and seven. And off the pit again, this time brought down to the 15 yard line. It'll be third down and about five to go for the Buckeyes. They've scored each time they've touched the ball so far today. Well, this Husky team went into Michigan a year ago, played Northwestern tough. But you can't come into Columbus against this type of team. The Buckeyes. With all the talent on offense, defense hitting on all cylinders, you can't come in and go three and out two or three times in a row, give the ball to Troy Smith in this offense with a short field. Let's keep an eye on Ted Ginn Jr. He split wide to the bottom of your screen. Matched up against Hansbro. It's a touchdown to Gonzalez. Saw Alva Hansbro, the defensive back for Northern Illinois, with his palms pointed skyward, saying, What now? With 3.15 to go in the first quarter, the Buckeyes looking every bit the part of the number one ranked team in the nation. 
21 love. Troy Smith, Heisman Trophy candidate, this time finding Gonzalez over the middle for the score. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Subway Dinner Theater presents The Unfed. And for dinner, Subway restaurants! Where you can get freshly baked bread every day. And with five delicious types to choose from, the whole family will be happy. Subway! Eat fresh! <laughs> There's no way to hide it. If you drive drunk, we will find you. Cops everywhere are stepping up enforcement and cracking down like never before. Sir, have you been drinking tonight? Sir, have you been drinking this evening? Sir, have you been drinking tonight? Make no mistake, you will get caught and you will be arrested over the limit under arrest. Oh, thank I you, love I love your curls. <laughs> Who's counting on your breaks today? Your brakes are too important to trust to just anyone. That's why you should come to Midas now. At Midas, brake pads or shoes are just $89.95 per axle installed. Be safe. Trust the Midas touch. Emmett Smith, NFL legend, gridiron guard, master of the <gasps> Mambo. You have nice legs. Dancing with the Stars, live to our premiere Tuesday, September 12th at 8, 7 central, only on ABC. Ohio State jumping out to a 21-0 lead with 3.15 to go in the first quarter. I'm Mark Jones along with Dave Norrie. Stacey Dale's down in the field. And the story of the game so far, Troy Smith, the Heisman Trophy candidate, 5 of 5 with three touchdown passes in his last three throws. That would be a good start. Uh, Troy Smith, he relied on his feet so much early in his career, but you've really seen a transition for this quarterback. Over the last year and a half, he's gotten great with his feet in the pocket, getting set up, and he is throwing the ball with beautiful timing here in the first quarter. Five for five. As you said, Jonesy, pretty impressive start. And to think a season ago, he had to sit out the first game as Perez watches it go over his head. And they'll start off on the 20. One more look at that last touchdown pass. And you watch the feet. And you watch his anticipation. I mean, he's throwing the ball with great timing. And maybe even more importantly, great accuracy and a nice job by Anthony Gonzalez to get inside on the post route. Well, question begs right now. What does Northern Illinois have to do to get back into this game? They've tried Wolf, but so far, nothing much happening for him. First down and 10. They run it underneath to Davis, and Davis is brought down after about a three-yard gain by Marcus Freeman. Britt Davis, the team's leading returning receiver. Sam Hurd now off to the NFL. Is it just about getting first downs right now? Well, I think it is about getting first downs. you got to move the chain some. You certainly don't want another three and out and give Troy Smith and his troops the ball back at midfield. But I think Northern Illinois, the problem here is you take away some of your playbook. You get down three touchdowns early. And you got to start getting away from the running game. So. Second down and seven. They get Wolf into the passing game. Got a nice block. And Garrett Wolf with space. And Wolf running by people. Garrett Wolf down to the 12-yard line. And they are back in scoring range. Finally tackled by Antonio Smith. And he got a great block on the corner from Jarrett Carter, the wide receiver, to spring him loose. Well, this is a beautiful play by Garrett Wolf. A nice timing, swinging the ball out. The quarterback, Phil Horvath, selling the pass down the field, and then the big guys release. What executed screen pass, and really the two only successful plays for the Huskies thus far have been screen passes. I think they'll go back to that play until the Buckeyes can stop. Here's Wolf. They run it up the middle. He's brought down to the 10 by 
Brandon Mitchell and getting back to that last play the nice screen pass for the long gain they talked about getting number one more involved in the passing game this year and Wolf says that he feels much more comfortable in it too. Yeah, he had about 24 25 catches last year. He was a part of the passing game but we talked to the Husky coaching staff they'd like to give him 50 receptions this year if they can he's going to be a, a bigger part of the pass game in the 06 edition second down and nine Davis in motion picked off it's intercepted and Grant is finally brought down at the 43 yard line as Horvath served up a pick four. Larry Grant the J.C. transfer with the first big defensive salvo for the Buckeyes. Devastating mistake by Phil Horvath at the quarterback position. And there's a player down at the actually it's one of the officials that are down at the 43 yard line right at midfield. Wow and that's the danger in a broken play. Interceptions, fumble returns. While we have a moment, let's check in with Matt Weinert in our studio back in New York. Mark, let's get a Taco Bell update in another of those Mac Big Ten matchups today Akron and Penn State. The new quarterback for the Lions is Anthony Morelli, and so far, so good. Dion Butler on the other end of the 42 year old touchdown pass on the opening drive. All's happy in Happy Valley so far. 7 0 over the Mac Chips. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. It was uh, them that defeated this Northern Illinois team last year in the MAC championship game. With 10 seconds to go, the injured referee with white hat, that's Dave Whitboat, being helped off the field. So the crew now will have to make its own adjustments. It's a different type of dynamic with one less official out on the field. Right wrist. And taking a look back at the interception, Britt Davis is going to come in motion. And then he's going to come out inside. But you got to keep your eyes on the danger. The blitz comes off the corner. Grant steps outside, Bump. makes the pick. And that pass batted down at the line of scrimmage by Ken West, who is arguably Northern Illinois best pass rusher had eight sacks as a freshman three as a sophomore and uh, boldly predicted uh, a couple of weeks ago that he's aiming for 15 sacks this year. Let's see what happened with Whitvote our official. There he is running at midfield. Got tripped up almost it looked like by Wolf and fell down still holding his right wrist. John Chorus will replace him. And that last deflected pass was Smith's first incompletion of the day. This is Wells in the ball game. Maurice Wells, not Chris Wells, the freshman. Maurice takes it down to the 40 yard line. It'll be third down at about seven to go for Ohio State with under a minute to go here in the first quarter. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie. Stacey Dale's down in the field here on an overcast Saturday afternoon. Opening weekend here, big one. College football, a great day coming up. ESPN on ABC, Notre Dame, Georgia Tech tonight. The Buckeyes rolling here on the banks of the Olentangy. Third down, seven to go. Smith with plenty of time. Wells out of the backfield with plenty of real estate. Down to the 10 yard line, first down, Ohio State. Hansen missed the tackle back at about the 25 to allow the 30 yard pickup. Well, the Buckeyes do such an exceptional job of spreading you out and then allowing their playmakers to get down the field and handle the football. Troy Smith was looking down the field initially dropped the ball off to Maurice Wells either a second or a third choice in his progression and Wells gives you a little taste of the speed. And now here's the other Wells Chris Wells the highly heralded freshman. Got about a yard down to the eight yard line. And that's the end of the first 15 minutes of play. An impressive frame for the Ohio State Buckeyes, ranked number one in the country. 
a very propitious beginning for Ohio State. Some indelible images already, albeit early in this young football season. 21-0 for Ohio State. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Today's singular All-America flashback, Notre Dame's Rocket Ismail. Widely considered one of the most exciting players ever to play college football. He's the only player in NCAA history to return two kickoffs for touchdowns in a game twice. And would also become the only player to be named first team All-American as a kick returner twice. Text vote to 87654 now on your singular wireless phone for a chance at a trip to the national championship game. you down I won't let you down no matter where you've been no matter where you go I won't let you down introducing the world's smallest camera flip phone take up to nine pictures with one push of a button the Pantex C300 only from singular fully loaded shrunk to fit singular raising the bar Heavy duty with the power and durability of a legendary Cummins turbo diesel, you can do it all. Do I know you from somewhere? Crazy blades out there. So reach for the ultimate bomb. Replenishing aftershave bomb with Care Protect soothes and repairs the damage from shaving. Only from Nivea for Men. Thursday, September 21st. Make a move with TV's hottest doctors. Mama. It's a new season and a new night. Do women have two sets of panties? The season premiere of Grey's Anatomy, Thursday, September 21st, only on ABC. Is all garnet and gray so far and welcome back to Dr. Pepper's college football kickoff weekend on ABC. The Ohio State Buckeyes leading 21 nothing. Chris Wells the highest recruited player in the country a season ago at tailback right now for the Buckeyes. Second down and goal to go. And it's Wells. Touchdown. yards into the end zone his fellows his boys call him beanie you can call him touchdown maker on that play Aaron Petri in for the extra point and the Buckeyes have been extremely efficient on offense today Buckeye offense is going to give some defensive coordinators long weeks of preparation and long nights watching film. This is the Ohio State third string tailback. <laughs> the best running back in the country coming out of high school. Chris Wells, you know, Mark, they list him at 6'1", 225. He goes about 240, maybe 245. He's big and he runs big. But what made him the most highly recruited athlete out of high school was his ability to bounce it outside. And I think Buckeye fans will see as the season goes along that he has the ability to take it all the way. He is a really a home run threat from the tailback position. And with that kind of size, it's pretty amazing. Ohio State with four drives and four touchdowns as a result. Leading 28-0. Let's go downstairs to Stacy after this kick. From the two yard line, it's Marcus Perez. They could use a nice return. 
Perez got rocked at the 32 yard line and that's where the Huskies will start. Let's go downstairs to Stacy. You know Mark I think even the Ohio State coaches are amazed by this offense. We asked uh, the offensive coordinator Jim Bowman what it's like to coach this offense every day. He said well I guess it kind of makes it easier. He doesn't know if he's ever been around so many guys that makes can make so many big plays. Ginn is one of them but there's a whole bunch more guys. Yeah, a lot of playmakers. First down and 10. Huskies could use a couple right now. Wolf usually is one. And he gets the first down. Great running out to the 44 yard line for Garrett Wolf. Got a nice block from his wide receiver Jerry Carter on that play. Now Garrett Wolf is an exceptional player. Five foot seven, only 170 pounds. Kind of reminds me a little bit of Ken Simonton, who played a couple years back at Oregon State. Has such great instincts. Gets in behind those big offensive linemen. And he also has the ability to turn on the speed. Really, it's been the only bright spot for this Husky offense thus far. Leading returning rusher in the nation this year. They give it to him again between the tackles. He's brought down after a gain of about three. John Kerr made the, the stop for Ohio State. We talked about Wolf being the top returning running back in the nation. Angelo Williams with a slightly higher average last year. Williams has moved on to the NFL. And Wolf uh, talks about emulating and patterning his game after the likes of uh, uh, Warwick Dunn. Kind of the same build, same size. Second and seven. Out of the backfield. This is Clanton. And Clanton is brought down shy of the first down at the 47. Antonio Smith making the tackle on the corner for Ohio State. Another dangerous pass by Phil Horvath. And you have to give him a bit of a break. It looks like Lawrence Wilson, who has a very bright future ahead of him at the defensive end position, came very close to taking that ball the other way. And this Husky team still trying to get their feet underneath them early in the second quarter. Third down and seven. There go. The pass complete, but short of the first down. They're going to mark it at the 49-yard line. It was complete to Nordine, the tight end, but he was hit immediately by Marcus Freeman. It'll be fourth and about three to go for Northern Illinois, and they'll move off to the sidelines and allow the punting unit to come on, led by Andy Dittman. That means that Ted Ginn will get another opportunity to come onto the field. He has his heels planted in the 10-yard line. See what happens here if maybe they try and kick it away from him. Maybe directional kick some. Did Benner shank the last one. And goes for the coffin corner this time. Where are they going to spot it? It goes into the end zone. Came close. Missed it by a few inches on the 49-yard punt. It'll come back out to the 20-yard line. Had the right idea, but not quite the execution. Pittman, Ginn, Smith, a potent troika back after this. Pickup and SUV. Gasoline and E85 ethanol. Haul and tow. The all new 2007 Chevy Avalanche. The most flexible vehicle out there. The last sound you hear before you step on the field. Click, clack.
Quick play. Quick crack. Sunday, September 10th, only on ABC. I mean, <laughs> how you doing, AJ? David Norrie. How's it going? I'm doing great. Good. How are things up in Titletown? Uh, you know, it's going well. We're looking forward to uh, the door opener next week, so. All right, welcome back, everyone. 11.58 to go in the first half. Jim Trestle's team doing a nice job at both ends, leading 28 to nothing. And on the phone right now, we have AJ Hawk, former linebacker, now with the Green Bay Packers. And, uh, AJ, you have to be very impressed with the way that your defense has played so far, coming up with a pick. Which of those new linebackers you think is going to be the guy? Uh, I mean, it's tough to pick one, I think. Um, I, I tell you the truth, I can't pick just one guy. I mean, obviously, Larry Grant getting that pick was pretty big. But I think, uh, you know, all of them, Marcus Freeman, James Larry Nice, they're all going to do really well this year. AJ, last night uh, you guys had a chance to play uh, against one of your old nemesis, uh, Vince Young with that Ohio State Texas game coming up next week on ABC. Hold on a second. We'll talk to you after this play, okay? Okay. First down and 10. Smith with a play fake. Pass complete to Gonzalez down to the 37 yard line. And back to you, AJ. Uh, what was it like going against uh, Vince Young again last night? Oh, it was, uh, it was a good experience. He, um, he played pretty well against us, to tell you the truth. But, you know, I mean, I got to see what he could do in college. And I think he's really proven, you know, that, that in his pre short preseason that he's had, that he can step in and be a good NFL quarterback. What's been the biggest adjustment for you so far at the next level with the Green Bay Packers? Um, I mean, obviously, everyone will tell you everyone's bigger, stronger, faster in the league. But, um, I mean, I just think there's a little more of a mental game. You know, offenses aren't going to – they're not going to come out and line up and, and what they're going to run. They're going to shift to it. They're going to motion. They're going to do things to try to try to get you communicating and, and getting guys running around. That's the, the biggest thing, I think, is how much of a mental game it is. What is it about Ohio State that prepares Buckeyes so well for that next level? Uh, I mean, I just think everything. I mean, the atmosphere, the, the coaches. I mean, I couldn't ask for better coaches. I mean, every coach I had at Ohio State was unbelievable, and, and they really get you ready. And with how the fans are in, in Columbus, Ohio, and how everyone treats you, and how you're under, you know, you're in a fishbowl, and you're under the microscope, it really does prepare you for the next level. I think it's, it's really similar here in Green Bay to how it was in, in Columbus. All right, AJ, hang on. We're going to run this play here. First down and ten for the Buckeyes. The handoff is to Pittman. Pittman brought down by his shoestrings at the 47-yard line. Hey, AJ, David Nora here. I was wondering what your thoughts would be on coming from such a storied <clears throat> program and the tradition of Ohio State and then moving on to the pros and getting to play for the Green Bay Packers up in Titletown, an NFL team that has a great history as well. Yeah, it's it's been a you know a seamless transition to tell you the truth. I mean, from how it was in Columbus, it's really similar here in Green Bay. How the fans act, how, how passionate they are, and how much they care about the team. So from day one when I walked here, when I you know walked in the door in Green Bay, I, I realized that the fans here are, are you know just as passionate as they were in Columbus. They care about the team, and, and I've talked to a lot of guys throughout the league that play for the teams and say you know it, it, it's not like this everywhere else. That Green Bay is a special place. A lot of football players that make the transition from college to pro ball, AJ, they talk about the speed of the game and, and, and noticing it even in the practices early in their NFL career. Did you see a noticeable change in, in terms of the speed and the way things happen on the football field? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's obviously a change um, in, in the speed of the game and, and how you have to pursue people with your angles and everything. But, you know, for the most part, I mean, it, it, it's still football, you know, it's still 11 on 11. So I just, I just try to remind myself of that once I start thinking too much out there on the field and, and just remember that, uh, you know, just try to have a little fun with it and, and not be thinking too much. Hey, AJ Hawk, want to thank you for joining us. And uh, real quick, I'm going to ask you your pick tonight. I know you're married to a former Notre Dame 
Yeah. Brad, okay. Who are you picking tonight against Georgia Tech and Notre Dame? Oh, Notre Dame all the way. Brady's going to have a, Brady's <laughs> right. gonna have a huge night. I can feel it. <laughs> all right, buddy. And congratulations on your recent nuptials as well. All right, thank you. All right. A.J. Hawk, former linebacker here at Ohio State, part of a great trio. Blood is thicker than water, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> that was a loaded question. Second down and ten. Run a little draw play to Pittman, and Pittman wrapped up at the line of scrimmage at the 34 by Larry English. English and West, pretty good ends for Northern Illinois. But we talked about the size discrepancy between Ohio State's offensive front and the defensive line for Northern Illinois. You look at the ends, Larry English goes 236, Ken West goes 243, going against uh, Boone and uh, Barton, a couple of tackles at well over 300 pounds. Third down and nine coming up for Ohio State. Again, split to the top of your screen. Smith just barely got it off in time, and it's dropped at the 30-yard line. Intended for his tight end, Rory Nickel. Fourth down and nine coming up for the Buckeyes. And the Buckeyes first quarter of this football game really established themselves in the passing game and you got to be careful a 25 point lead in the first half you don't want to lose your starting quarterback pressure from the backside and Troy Smith but I think it's been mistakes Jonesy in the in the defensive backfield not not the size discrepancy that has put the Northern Illinois Huskies in a big hole early in this football game. Is the South African Ryan Pretorius in to attempt a long field goal, 52 yards. And he comes up just a little bit short. Gone are the likes of Josh Houston and Mike Nugent. It's a new kicking area as Joe Novak team dodges a bullet. Back to Columbus right after this. Two thousand seven Chevy Tahoe. It has an available 320 horsepower. Give a little bit, give a little bit of my life for you. With the best fuel efficiency in its class. Tahoe, the power to give something back. That's an American revolution. Give a little bit, give a little bit. Every day, workers across America cover our good name with dirt, dust, paint, oil, grease, and mud. And you know what? We're fine with that. Dickies, a legend in work. College football on ABC. Brought to you by Chevrolet, America's brand, Chevy, an American revolution. Aflac, ask about it at work. And Under Armour, the advantage is undeniable. Who would ever think that a library could look so majestic? One of the marvelous buildings here on campus in Columbus at Ohio State University. Speaking of libraries, the Buckeyes have taken Northern Illinois to school so far. Leading 28-0. That was the first time Ohio State didn't score on a drive. For the first time today. First and 10 for Northern Illinois. Little counter. Wolf. Boy, he can make people miss. First down out near midfield at the 49-yard line, tackled by O'Neill. And now it's time for our Aflac trivia question. This week's question, 
In the 2002 National Champion Buckeyes game, they began the season ranked number 13 in the AP preseason poll. Now, what Division I school holds the record for being the lowest ranked team in an AP final regular season poll to win a national championship? Ruminate that for a while. Yeah. First down and 10. Garrett Wolf again. Picking his spots. He's so patient in the running game, and that's the result. Garrett Wolf with a stellar run down to the 28 yard line. 1,580 yards a season ago, 16 touchdowns. You see why. Well, the Huskies down by four touchdowns, but this has been a bit of a highlight reel film for Mr. Wolf early on. Two impressive plays on screen passes, and now he's starting to get the ball rolling in the running game and getting some good work from both of his offensive tackles. Free on the left side, doing a great job opening up holes for Garrett Wolf. On first down, Horvath underneath. He tried to hit, hit Wolf on the screen, but he got tied up with Marcus Freeman. It'll be second down and 10. And Wolf, really a great story. When you think about how far he has come, you know, his parents drove him to the Calb in Illinois on campus. They dropped him off, and after a week, he was homesick. He actually thought about leaving and going home and suffered a couple of injuries, had an academic mix up, was ineligible as a result of that. Last year battled shoulder injuries at 5'7". He is a lot more resolute than you would think. Very resilient. Second and 10, here he is again, stopped up at the 32 by Alex Barrow. And let's go downstairs to Stacy for more on Wolf. Well, Mark, you said he has come a long way. He was the one guy this summer. He wants a MAC championship. They all do. But he was the one guy that called a players-only meeting and said to his teammates, I don't care if you like me at the end of the season. I don't care if you're my friend. So long as we win a MAC championship, and I'm not afraid to get in your face. He's certainly the leader of this team, guys. Yeah, he was ninth on the depth chart as a freshman. Third and 13. Wide open to the tight end over the middle. First down to Nordine. Jake Nordine has drawn the interest of several NFL people recently and shows you why with his pass catching ability. Well, Joe Novak feels that Nordine has a good shot to play on Sundays, and this is a nice little move into the middle of the field by Phil Horvath. Nice timing, and then Nordine just shaping that route in the void. He's a very talented blocker in addition to his pass catching skill. Last time they came this deep into Ohio State territory, they threw a pick. That one incomplete. Intended for Nordine again, that time unable to hang on to it. I mentioned the interception by Larry Grant the last time they got into the red zone. Second down and 10 coming up for Northern Illinois. On the play with a team like this Buckeye outfit, what we said earlier, you've got to play almost a free football. Too many mistakes in the first half. The turnover was big. Mix-ups in the defensive secondary for the Huskies and a couple drop balls have also been a problem on offense. Except Joe Novak, this game's really starting to go downhill on. Second down and 10, a three receiver formation. And they hand it off to Wolf, who stopped up. Back at the 17 yard line by Jay Richardson. Let's get a Penn State update from Matt Weiner back in our studio. Al Mark, it's turning into quite a starting debut for Anthony Morelli, the new Penn State quarterback. Seven of his first ten and a couple of touchdown passes. This one to Jordan Norwood as he fills in for Michael Robinson. Often graduated, Penn State leads it by 17. All right, thanks a lot, Matt. Penn State just seconds away from winning the Big Ten last year on their own. Losing that game at Michigan. Third and 15 here. Horvath on the loose. And throws it over the head of his receiver, Nordine, for the third time. It'll be fourth down coming up, and in comes the field goal unit. Jim Haycock, the defensive coordinator for the Buckeyes, his unit pitching a shutout so far, and uh, Joe Novak trying to figure things out for his crew. Chris Nendick coming in to attempt a field goal now for Northern Illinois. 
He was 9 of 13 last year. On his career, he's 25 of 34. Looking for their first points of the afternoon. And he knocks it through. The Huskies get the three, and it's 28 to three. Joe Nendick comes in and puts the finishing touches on this drive. Not what they wanted, but they'll take three anyway. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Once Susie and I retire, we'll be taking trips like this whenever we want. It's a good thing we've been planning. At Pacific Life, giving you the right tools to help you meet your financial goals is what we're all about. As you look to the future, look to Pacific Life. Ask your financial professional about Pacific Life, the power to help you succeed. In all the world, there are a select few who at their very core are capable of incredible transformation. Under the most grueling conditions, they are shaped, hardened, sharpened, ready to stand among the most elite of all warriors. The few, the proud, the Marines. Could the person sitting next to you soon be your friend, enemy, or lover? They may be the most important person you've never met, at least not yet. Six Degrees premieres Thursday, September 21st after the season premiere of Grey's Anatomy, only on ABC. Welcome back to Columbus, and let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Troy Smith and Ted Ginn playing a little pitch and catch early in this ball game. That was the first touchdown. Here's the second one. This one traversing much more real estate, as is the custom when those two hook up. And then the third one went to Gonzalez. They scored on their first four possessions of the ball game, and Ginn now standing on the goal line, ready to receive this kickoff. You think they have the temerity to actually kick his way? <laughs> he is the most dangerous skill athlete in the game of football I would kick away from him every chance I got well, he gets his hands on it even though they did kick it away from him and the Buckeyes are looking for a flag on a potential late hit so is their claim plus the booze cascading down on the field well, don't miss the premiere of Saturday Night Football. Heisman hopeful Brady Quinn leading Notre Dame in their quest for a national title against ACC power Georgia Tech. That's tonight at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, part of Dr. Pepper weekend on ABC. College football lives here. Brent Musburger, Bob Davey, Kirk Herbstreit on the call on that. It's going to be a great weekend of college football. Here's Pittman on first and 10. A gaping hole on that right side, and Pittman... Wisely using his blockers out to the 34-yard line. Stan White leading the way. And this Ohio State offensive line. No shortage of talent up front for the Buckeyes. And he got Daddish filling in, sliding in to start at center this year. And what a block by Stan White, the big senior fullback. And the Buckeyes are so versatile on offense, they have the ability to spread you out, hit you with the passing game, and then they line up with White in the backfield and power the ball at you. First down and 10. There's Pittman again. Pittman with another first down out to the 48 yard line. Alva Hansbro making the tackle. There's been so much said about Chris Wells, the freshman. But one of the great things about college football are the bonds and friendships that are formed between teammates. Antonio Pittman has really taken Wells under his wing as a freshman, shown him where to be, showed him how to do it. 
and done some very good things for him. Well, and, and that's always important, the leadership. You hear head coaches talk about leadership. It's guys that have been in the program for longer periods of time and bringing the younger kids up, helping them develop. Again, with a nice catch, but a nice tackle, too, by Adriel Hansbro. There's a look at the freshman Chris Wells, a.k.a. Beanie. Never did get the story on the nickname. <laughs> I mean, Chris Wells with the type of talent that he harbors. And he says, hey, doesn't matter what you call me, but I'm always going to be a threat. And big power back. And we broke down the Fiesta Bowl film against Notre Dame you know, early in the year. And what impressed me is how Ohio State came out, got a lead passing the football in the first half against the Fighting Irish. And then they lined up and they ran the ball at Notre Dame between the tackles. This team is so versatile the way they can attack. Second and six. There's one of the guys in their attack. Pittman can run around or over people down to the 39-yard line brought down by Blaylor. We asked you earlier our AFLAC trivia question. What Division One school holds the record of being the lowest ranked team in the AP final season poll to win a national championship? Boy, that is a tough one, Mark. I came up blank on it. Yeah. After a few guesses. The answer? Division One. Now they don't make a determine. Yeah. Youngstown Division State. One double A. That was a trick question. <laughs> and the head coach was that guy. Our producer Bruce Clark had us thinking one A, not one double A. <laughs> Come on, Here's Maurice Wells this time down to the 36-yard line. And getting back to Tressel and his history at Youngstown State, it, it stays with him in the respect that being at a Division I AA school, and we'll call it for now, he took a very hands-on approach to things and worked with a, a smaller staff, but he still likes to be very hands-on here at Ohio State. And winning a handful of national titles at Youngstown, Youngstown State. But also remember, he was an offensive coach from 83 to 85 with the Buckeyes and was part of that Rose Bowl team January of 85. A five receiver empty formation. This is Small. Ray Small also out of Glenville High School. That powerhouse in Ohio that produces so many players that ultimately find their way to Ohio State. And Ray Small, they say, could actually be better than Ted Ginn Jr. That's what uh, well, Ted Ginn that's what Senior said. Senior said. <laughs> but, but remember, Ted Ginn Jr. came out of Glenville as a defensive back. So again, you know, he had to get acclimated to the wide receiver position. And I think Ted Ginn Jr. has become a much better route runner. Small, of course, has loads of potential and a, a lot of speed. Third and two, Chris Wells in the backfield. And there's the strength that we talked about down to the 26 yard line he dragged he moved the pile bobbing his head nodding his head saying yeah that's what I'm going to give you all year well the Buckeyes won a national title the 2002 team and Maurice Claret played a big role in that team and many documented problems recently off the field Chris Wells reminds people of Maurice Claret but he's bigger and I think the potential is unlimited for this young man. First and ten. Flag down as Pittman goes down at the 21-yard line. Flag went down at about the 26. Pittman getting a lot of work here. They've used all three running backs. Holding. Number 75, Ohio State. That hold's going to be against Alex Boone. Yeah, With 2.20 Alex. to go in the half. Alex Boone playing in his first year at left tackle for the Buckeyes. Let's see if we can pick it up. Uh, there it is. And just from behind. And, and but Boone starting for the first time at that left tackle position. Dada, who was a starter a year ago, moves into center. Boone and Barton at the tackles both have all conference potential. And then Dada, maybe an All American this year. On first and 20 after the penalty, they set up the screen and well read by the Husky defense. Blaylark making the stop. Well, 
near the conclusion of today's game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Now, to honor their determination, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. That's the Chevrolet players of the game. Second and 20 coming up. Laylark made that last stop, former walk on. Maurice Wells in a tailback now for the Buckeyes. 28 to go. Out of the shotgun. Smith completes it to Rabisky. Brought down by Adriel Hansbro. Yeah, if this was a bit tighter football game here, not a 25 point deficit, which is where we are right now, but if it was a tighter football game, I think Joe Novak might want to use a few timeouts here right now then maybe get the football back but being down close to four touchdowns in the first half Joe Novak think about getting into the locker room and I don't blame him. Yeah. ten yard pickup on that last play third and ten coming up the backs out of the eye Troy Smith threw it behind Gonzalez who was the closest receiver to the ball on the play and it'll be fourth down and ten for the Buckeyes. Last time they had the South African Ryan Pretorius come in to attempt that long 52 yard field goal. We'll see who they send in this time. Looks like they're going to send in Petrie. He's the guy that won the kicking job. It was a very fierce battle. Had good lineage when it comes to place kickers here at Ohio State over the last five or six years. This one coming from 45 yards out. And it's wide. Pushed it to the right. We're going to take a timeout and come back with more. You're watching ESPN on ABC. There's no way to hide it. If you drive drunk, we will find you. Cops everywhere are stepping up enforcement and cracking down like never before. Sir, have you been drinking tonight? Sir, have you been drinking this evening? Sir, have you been drinking tonight? Make no mistake, you will get caught and you will be arrested over the limit under arrest. Where are we going for our honeymoon? A romantic island in the south. Jamaica? Uh, credit card miles are blacked out. A little more south. Antigua. Uh, blacked out further south. Aruba? Getting warmer. Isn't this great? Did you notice? No bugs. We gotta switch to Capital One. Get Capital One's new No Hassle Rewards. Now with knockout dates, no earn caps, and no miles expiration. Hey, it's walrus mating season. What's in your wallet? It's not just a jersey. It's a symbol of who we are. A community of coaches, student athletes, and fans. Bound together by a code of conduct. Well, Aaron Petrie uh, missing a field goal from 45 yards out. One of the few miscues for the Buckeyes so far on the afternoon. Uh, how does Northern Illinois get back into this game now? I'm not sure they can get back into this football game without a couple turnovers and some dramatic things happening. Troy Smith came out in this football game hitting on all cylinders, and the Huskies made some real mistakes in the defensive backfield that allowed the Buckeyes to jump out to a big lead. Well, you certainly can blame this guy, Garrett Wolf with the reception for the first down at the 39 yard line 24 seconds to go and uh, the clock an issue this year albeit early in this college football season remember that it'll run as soon as they place it I'll tell you more about that in the second half on a change of possession well, on the hot starts when it meets leather too and if Northern Illinois is going to get into a no huddle status there with three timeouts you might as well use a timeout after that prior play you're either in a clock status or you're not and now the Huskies have had a couple opportunities to get back in the game Mark you know you mentioned how do they get back into the game that the pick 
down near the goal line. The interception thrown by Phil Horvath. And that was an opportunity for the Huskies to narrow the gap. Horvath with another incompletion. It was intended for Britt Davis. Stops the clock with 17 seconds to go in the first half. Brings up the question, too, about uh, Dan Nicholson. Might we see him a little bit in the second half? Coach Novak talked about wanting to get Nicholson some reps, but you don't want to do it at the expense of uh, losing your starting quarterback. Well, the plan was to get Nicholson, rep, Nicholson some reps regardless of how Phil Horvath played at quarterback. So, yes, I think we will see Dan Nicholson in the second half. He doesn't want that kind of treatment if he's going to go in as Horvath gets sacked by Jay Richardson. That's going to be the last play of the first half. A half dominated by the hometown crew from Columbus. It was an offensive explosion in the game's opening moments. And again, and for more, let's go downstairs to Stacy. Coach, you have a lot of question marks about this defense. What have you seen from them in the first half? Well, we're playing against a heck of a back. Aaron Wolf is something special. He catches the ball, and, and I think our guys are playing hard. We've played a lot of guys. So you'd really have to study the film to find out where we need to get better. But I thought we got a little sloppy when we got up. You know, that can happen sometimes. We need a much sharper second half so we get better. What's impressed you about Troy Smith and Teddy Ginn? You know, those guys know what's going on. They're veterans now. Uh, they're very explosive. And they know they have a lot of help. If we can spread the ball around, you know, they'll end up having their own uh, nice storybook as well. Okay, thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second. Mark? All right, Stacy. An impressive Opening half for the season for Smith and Ginn. We'll be joining John Saunders and the crew in our New York studio right after this. You'll watch ESPN on ABC. Counting on your breaks today. Your breaks are too important to trust to just anyone. That's why you should come to Midas now. At Midas, brake pads or shoes are just $89.95 per axle installed. Be safe. Just a Midas touch. We convinced to stay off the street. All we do is create a void. We've got to fill that void. More than just a coach. You want to start a football team? Exactly. Whatever hood you're from, this is your hood now. More than just a team. I want to show people I can play. It's harder than a loser. More than just a game. Now it's time to prove to everyone out there that even though you're locked up, you are somebody. Based on a true story. Not lose no more. All we got to do is show it one more time. Red Iron Gang. Rated PG-13. In theaters September 15th. Troy Smith has started his season for the Hyden Trophy with a pretty good outing, 28 to 3. John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. And when you look at this Ohio State Buckeye team, a lot of people thought Northern Illinois might have a chance because they're a power out of the MAC, but Ohio State looks like a number one team in the country. And the reason that we thought there might be a little crack in the ship there would be because of all the new defensive players at Ohio State. Well, forget about that. We also knew they had talented guys replacing the old guys. And those new guys out there on defense at Ohio State are dominating the game. I'm, I'm very impressed. Troy Smith, Ted Ginn, all those guys. Teddy Ginn's looking like a stud right now. I mean, he's really making big plays for Troy. They came out and dominated this game the way a top-notch team is supposed to. Other, you know, Michigan struggled a little bit today. 
Ohio State came out and made a statement in the first quarter. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, Texas, of course, won the national championship a year ago. They're trying to do it again, but they're trying to do it without Vince Young. They're going to try and you know, with young Colt McCoy. McCoy looked pretty good, but when you got receivers like Lima Swede, it makes it easier. Great catch. Ball is a little bit low. Catch it with his hands. Colt just took care of his job. Put the ball in his hands. Let his receivers make the plays. He's got a great team surrounding him, and he did an excellent job today. Just a little shovel pass here to Selvin Young. Selvin Young, they have several runners that they can rely on, and again, that's the supporting cast that Colt McCoy has. The wide receivers at Texas are outstanding. Lima Sweet just got a lot to him. That's a four-yard hitch route right there. Turns into a touchdown pass. Quarterbacks love that. Shovel passes, screens, hitch routes. Marshall against West Virginia. Steve Slayton, could he win the Heisman? Patrick White finds Brandon Miles. That was one of the questions, whether or not they had a quarterback. Slayton goes 15 yards on this, runs it in for the touchdown, a 21 to nothing lead. You like the quarterbacking situation at West Virginia. I think Patrick White is a heck of a player. Last year, I had a chance to watch him play a few times in person, watch him throw the football. The guy has touch, and he was a freshman last year. He has an outstanding quarterback coach and a leader in Rich Rodriguez. Rodriguez knows how to call plays that suit the player's talents that he has. And I believe with the running game they have with Slayton, uh, Pat White and these guys, they're, they're pretty darn uh, potent. Our boy John's picking Slayton in the Heisman race over there. So John will pick 10 or 15 <laughs> guys <before it's> over. <laughs> hey, yes, I will. The West Virginia starting their March. They're the team that we think has a great opportunity of running the table this year. And and they look sharp. They're practically the only team we think has a chance to run the table. But Don't throw me we with you. Because, <laughs> those things is, because they're in the Big East and the Big East struggles a bit. Joe Paterno, ageless, 50 years from Penn State, finds Anthony Morelli 42 yards to Dion Butler. Penn State has a 7 to nothing lead. Then Morelli again. Can Penn State be as good as they were last year? Well, let me tell you, I was one of the guys who felt like Akron would play a pretty good ball game here, and, and that Penn State was going to have to watch it, but Morelli looked good. Stanford against Oregon. Dennis Dixon, 44 yards to Jason Stewart, but Stanford has stayed in this game, though. Stanford did some big plays, got back in the game. They've been throwing the ball. Trent Edwards, a quarterback. Trent is a guy that is the most experienced of the group out there in the Pac-10, and they're throwing a football that they can't run the ball a lick. Will Proctor for Clemson against Florida Atlantic there, as Clemson grabs an easy lead. They have Boston College next week. Louisiana Tech against Nebraska. Big sack here by Jay Moore. Then Zach Taylor goes through the air, 12 yards to Matt Herrian. It's going to be interesting to see the development of Taylor this year and how much now Callahan has his influence and in hand in that offense. But again, it's got to be the defense. Nebraska's defense has to step up. It can't be a soft shirt. Can it be the black shirt? Can the Nebraska defense show up again this season? Ohio State and Texas next week. Both are going to come off winners this week. And we know Texas last year pulled it out at the end against Ohio State. Do the Buckeyes is the number one team have the advantage. I think looking at them today, they look they look tough. I mean, I think Ohio State may have the edge going into that ball game. I've got Texas as my national champion, or good into the championship game. Right. So uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just saw him. I just saw him. It's, you know, it's, it's a like, bunch of different the, names the, out there, and you know he's getting back on with them later. Yeah. <laughs> you just say, what, do we, what do you think? Uh, I, I think Troy Smith's a darn good quarterback, and, mm -hmm. and Colt McCoy is not the experienced quarterback that Troy Smith is, and Ohio State has a huge advantage. The fact that Smith is there mm -hmm. with a supporting cast. I think it's a big time difference. The Buckeyes against Texas. You'll see it next week on ABC. We will continue with more scores and highlights when we return, including the Big Blue and other teams that are the Big Ten. Oh, I stole his password online and hello. Makeover. <laughs> I got hair extensions, plumped at the lips, and snapped the hottest headshots. Hollywood, here I come. Tell me what you think. Unbreak my heart, say you love me again. Undo this hurt that you caused when you walked out the door and you walked out of my life. The Identity Theft Solutions. Talk to a real person to help get your life back. Free when you get a city credit card or city bank account. People ask me, do I see things flash before my eyes during a crash? I tell them, it's pretty much blurred streaks of metal, asphalt, grass, rubber, smoke. Oh, and those guys in fireproof suits. Now, 
NASCAR 2007. Rated E for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. I only applied to one university. I've met my best friends, earned a degree respected around the world, and had so many unbelievable experiences. Ohio State has brought out the best in me. And I think it's safe to say I've left my mark. NIU, serving the heart of America's heartland. Educating new leaders for the nation's third largest region. Bringing expertise and innovation to communities and public schools. Creating new jobs and new workers. Conducting research that improves our quality of life. Northern Illinois University. Across the region, from Chicago to the Mississippi, NIU works. Welcome back to ESPN on ABC. Time now for our No Huddle highlights as we bring you the action from earlier today. First, Georgia and Western Kentucky. All right, you guys take this one. Mikey Henderson, what does he do wrong here? Hey, Mikey, take off. Mikey, he likes it. He's gone. He's taking off. Coach on get in the end zone. Get in the end zone. Get in the end zone. You got to have the ball in your hand when you're in the end zone. Yeah, look, at, look how he touches the ball. He's out of the back of the end zone, so that ends up being a touchback. So the next series, defense stops them. They have another punt return opportunity. And hey, Mikey. What do you say we carry the leather with us to the golden territory this time? Can we do it right this time? Look what he does at the end. Stick the ball out, takes a chance on a falling out. He got it done, though. Michigan against Vanderbilt. Quarterback Chris Nixon gets sacked by Lamar Woodley. Woodley's third of the day. Michigan's defense had six sacks. And Chad Henney goes to the air. You know what? He wasn't real consistent throughout the day, and I thought Vanderbilt played pretty darn good and showed up. Montana facing Iowa. Kirk Ferentz and quarterback Drew Tate finding Dominique Douglas. Drew Tate, my boy, a little play action down by the goal line against the zone, but he had a great day. Three touchdown passes, managed the offense. Iowa just racked up the points all day long, and, you know, he, he's, like I said, my dark horse for the Heisman. Dark horse? You've already put a Heisman campaign together for the he guy. He is. You're calling the coach. You're wanting Ferris to go ahead and throw <laughs> more balls out there. If there was a game in the ones we just looked at that surprised me a bit, it's Michigan. They didn't look as good as I thought they would be. I thought they were the, the team outside the top ten that had a chance to come on and maybe make a run for the Big Ten title, but Chad Henney has got to become more productive. Just didn't look consistent out there at all. No, they struggled offensively. Their defense carried the load today. No doubt about it. Mm -hmm. Michigan or Wolverines, though, they come off with a victory. That's a good start for a lot of teams. No upsets thus far. This is ESPN on ABC. Come in threes. Chili's Triple Dipper Dinner lets you choose three of your favorite dishes for just $9.99, each with a different dipping sauce for extra flavor. Southwestern egg rolls, chicken crispers, Kentucky barbecue boneless wings, and more. Only at Chili's. spice delicious. Sunday, September 24th. It's finally time for the season premiere. Will you marry me? I know it's been six months, but he could still come out of it, right? It's time. Does she know you killed your wife? To come clean. I don't do that. Yeah. I'm a Republican. The season premiere of Desperate Housewives, Sunday, September 24th at 9, 8 central, only on ABC. Tonight, ESPN on ABC has the debut of Saturday Night Football. Notre Dame and Georgia Tech. For more, let's join the game day crew and Chris Fowler. Well, thanks, John. Notre Dame oozes tradition, but so does Georgia Tech. And part of it, 
John W. Heisman coached here way back in the day. Of course, the award name for him has been won by a Notre Dame quarterback four times. Could Brady Quinn become the fifth? Not if his team goes 2-8, and eight, as Paul Hornings did. How will Quinn stand up to the scrutiny that's going to accompany every incompletion and interception? The getting to that answer starts tonight. Brady, Brady Quinn. Quinn. Brady Quinn's Heisman, Heisman Trophy him. candidate. I think if people aren't talking, then you're not doing anything good. Brady Quinn. Brady Quinn. Brady Quinn. Getting so much attention, so much publicity. You know, most people know how to handle it. Touchdown! I think he's handled the situation very well. This is incredible. The only way he's going to win accolades or be considered for accolades is for us to win football games. It's completely out of your hands, and the only way you can control is just by how you perform in the field. Touchdown! just does so good every year, but then the next year coming up, he does better somehow. This guy does it every week. Brady's been a level-headed guy. He understands the hype doesn't mean anything. If we lose, that's it's irrelevant. And the question for Lee Corso and Kirk Street: how well will Quinn play tonight against a tech defense that does very well confusing less experienced quarterbacks? Oh, I think he's going to be sensational. I watched Brady Quinn and Charlie Weiss from the sideline three times last year, and boy, was I amazed. That Charlie Weiss can coach quarterbacks, and Brady Quinn is really good. I tell you what, that's not the secret to this ball game because they're not going to stop those two guys. If they get the ball and keep it away from them and make Brady Quinn play in the sideline, they got a shot. Well, I think this is going to be an interesting and an exciting opportunity for Brady Quinn because Notre Dame is facing a defense that's going to blitz 75 to 80 percent of the time. If they protect Brady Quinn, Brady Quinn's the Heisman preseason favorite, and after week one, Brady <laughs> Quinn will still be the favorite. Yeah. He could have a huge night tonight if they don't get pressure on him. And Tech has Calvin Johnson, could have potentially the top two NFL draft picks in this game. Yeah, right. One field tonight. Guys, back to you. All right, guys, thanks a lot. All right, Notre Dame, a lot of expectations on them this year. Can Georgia Tech get them early? Well, I, I don't think so. You know, everything we talk about really has centered around the quarterback, Brady Quinn, but Darius Walker running the football and Jeff Shamarcha outside, he's got some excellent weapons to go to. This guy has talent around him. He has a football team surrounding him. And I know in order to win the Heisman Trophy, Doug, you got to have a lot of supporting cast members out there. I'm not so certain, though, that Georgia Tech has a supporting cast to be able to come in there and stop all of the weapons on offense. Right. But Charlie Weiss made a point. You got to win football games. And winning football games will him win the Heisman. So He's just got to take care of business. On the flip side, Georgia Tech is a blitzing defense, likes to come after you. I think Brady Quinn's strong suit is directing protections to pick up blitzes and make plays. All right, that's Saturday Night Football tonight on ESPN on ABC. It packs so much real cheese in such a small bite, people are wondering. How does cheese it do it? I know. They just. Cheese it. Cheese it. Lots and lots of cheese baked into little, little bites. Cheese it. The big cheese. We are the survivors of Flight 815. Before the crash, we were doctors. Millionaires. Con men. Soldiers. Artists. Convicts. Rock stars. Here on this island, we have a chance to start again. We can be anyone. Anyone we want to be. But who? 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 Who will I be? Find yourself lost. The brand new season premieres Wednesday, October 4th at 9, 8 central, only on ABC. Acura RDX with super handling all-wheel drive. The all-new Acura RDX with real-time traffic. 
Get your own personal news right on your desktop with ABC7 now. Just set up any 20 words as triggers and get alerts only for the news you want. Only from ABC7. Download it now at abc7chicago.com. Chopper 7 HD HD. Chicago's first and only HD news helicopter. Clearer picture, sharper detail, with or without an HD set. Chopper 7 HD HD. Only on ABC 7 News. Time and Temp brought to you by ComEd and Exelon Company. Over 104,000 denizens here, a pack sold out. Ohio Stadium watching the home team put on a show today. The Buckeyes leading Northern Illinois 28 to 3 as we get started here soon in the third quarter play. I'm Mark Jones along with David Norrie. Stacey Dale's down in the field joining us in just a few. An offensive explosion to start the game for Ohio State. And Troy Smith, the quarterback, when you're the quarterback at this school, you are in a fishbowl, but he's handled the pressure extremely well. Oh, he came out red hot, and I think defenses are going to have to learn you can't let Ted Ginn Jr. run by you early in the football game. Notre Dame found that out in the Fiesta Bowl. I think Northern Illinois found that out this afternoon. First series of the ball game, that's how it culminated. A touchdown by Ginn on the pass from Smith, and then this was the extended long play version, the 12-inch remix, and then on defense, they, they answer the call with the interceptions as well. So Ohio State answering some of those questions on defense with just two returning starters, and uh, they kept Northern Illinois off the scoreboard for all but uh, the field goal that they allowed uh, in the second quarter of play. If you're Northern Illinois, to get things on track a little bit here. Well, and, and the game certainly isn't over. You get down 25 points against Ohio State, it's close to being over. But if Phil Horvath or Dan Nicholson, his backup, can come in and rally a team, maybe pick up a touchdown or two, then you can get, regain touch late in the third quarter. You might have a little bit of hope, but Northern Illinois, not a lot to hold on to right now in terms of confidence, and they've made some real negative play both offensively and defensively. Well, Stacy Dales had a chance to speak to some of the people down in the field at halftime. Let's go downstairs to Stacy. And Mark, I just talked to a very calm Joe Novak, and I said, what did you tell your guys at the half? And he said, well, Stacy, it's obvious. We did everything wrong. I said, we have to start over, and we have to do things better. We can't make the mistakes, can't miss assignments. They've just got to be a better team against this Ohio State team, guys. Yeah, they uh, certainly were outplayed in the first quarter and the second quarter, and Ted Ginn Jr. helped set the tenor of this contest early. Buckeyes will receive here in the third quarter. They tried kicking it away from him, and this time they'll kick it high to keep it away from Ginn. It comes down to O'Neill, and O'Neill, who's one of those Glenville 7, Glenville High School, runs it out to the 35-yard line. Time now for our Pacific Life game summary. Some of the cogent numbers so far. Ohio State with a uh, almost 300 yards of offense. 13 first downs they scored on their first four possessions just one penalty so showing a lot of discipline as well and a lot of short fields for Troy Smith to operate early in the football game and five for five start for for Troy Smith at the quarterback position and then Ted Ginn Jr. big playability being flashed in the first half of this ball game. Pittman on the first carry of the third quarter out to the 37 got a couple brought down by Larry English. Antonio Pittman had a pretty productive first half as well. Last year, remember, he ran for over 1,300 yards, averaging 5.5 per pop, had seven rushing touchdowns, and this year there is a lot of depth at that spot once again for the Buckeyes. He's backed up by Maurice Wells and Chris Wells, who had a touchdown in the first half as well. Second down and eight for Ohio State. Smith behind his tight end Larry pardon me Rory nickel and it's incomplete and Mark we've talked about all the strengths for this Buckeye offense you have the great running backs Troy Smith the 
Heisman Trophy candidate, a Heisman Trophy candidate on the outside with Ted Ginn Jr. If there is one weakness, now even the offensive line is impressive, but if there's one weakness on this offense, I would say it's the lack of a go-to guy at tight end. And you know, Rory Nichols going to have to develop and become a weapon for this offense as the year goes on for the Buckeyes. Third down and eight. And it's broken up at midfield intended for Gonzalez broken up by Tim McCarthy and it's fourth down the first three and out of the ball game for Ohio State. So the defense for the Huskies responds here early in the third quarter. Yeah, you can't get back into a football game in one step and that was a good first step by Northern Illinois to at least become competitive here in the second half get that Ohio State offense off the field. Our first look at A.J. Trapasso, the punter for Ohio State. Punting from his own 27. Perez calls for the fair catch at the 20-yard line for Northern Illinois. We're going to stay right here. And we'll see who comes out to take the reins of the offense. It looks like it's going to remain with Phil Horvath after that 43-yard punt. And I like that decision and Dan Nicholson is going to get his snaps. There's no doubt he's going to get quality time throughout this year. But Phil Horvath is a senior. Granted he made a big mistake on the interception by Grant in the first half. But I think he's been pretty smooth in this game considering the pressure he's faced and the fact that his ball game by his, uh, his team has dropped. First and ten. Little receiver screen here. Out to the 29 yard line that's Britt Davis the leading returning receiver from a season ago brought down by Anderson Russell Garrett Wolf was the one bright spot for this offense in the first half now he was a bright spot and uh, I mentioned Horvath faced a lot of pressure and it was tough for Horvath to drop you know back two three touchdowns in a deficit but Garrett Wolf put together some highlight real tight plays and he is a big timer when he's carrying the football. I get a chance here on second and one. It's Wolf. And he got the first down to the 32 yard line. You know, it's interesting that Garrett Wolf had a chance to meet Troy Smith, the quarterback for Ohio State, at an All American photo shoot earlier this summer out on the West Coast. And Wolf was very surprised by the amount of guys that actually knew who he was. So he has a lot of humility, but. Both he and Smith have become close friends since that time. They actually spoke on the phone yesterday. Wolf told me for about 20 minutes, and they talked about the experience of going through their senior seasons together. There's a Smith back there in that red cap. First down and 10. A gaping hole in the middle for Wolf. Brought it out to the 41. A good block by Nordine. And tonight, folks, it's the premiere of Saturday Night Football. Heisman hopeful Brady Quinn and number two Notre Dame in their quest for a national title against ACC powerhouse Georgia Tech tonight at 8 5 Pacific part of Dr. Pepper kickoff weekend on ABC college football lives here I'm heading back to the hotel Dave you can watch that game <laughs> I'm going to try to get out Woo. of town but uh, <laughs> but you have a good time second and one it's Wolf again nice surge up front and he picks his spot out near midfield at the 50. James Laurinaitis swiped at him and made the stop. Well, Nordine at tight end is a very solid block, and he got nice bookends. That offensive tackle with Doug Free on the left side, John Brost on the right side, and watch this group work together. A zone blocking outfit. They've had some success. You, know, you look at the scoreboard and you don't realize the type of success Northern Illinois has had up front at times. There's Wolf trying to get to the edge and does tiptoes out of bounds at the 42 but there's a flag on the play it was thrown late in the vicinity of Jared Carter the wide receiver who was blocking on Malcolm Jenkins the corner they cannot afford to have negative plays like that the result of penalties. Number 14, Northern Illinois, 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat, first down. Jared Carter, the culprit here. And you watch on the outside, Carter with the right hand up on the jersey. 
And that's not a tough call to make outside for an official. The margin is so slim with this Ohio State team. And it, early drive, you know, penalty in the first quarter, kind of slowed down this Northern Illinois offense. A holding call on this drive, and, and the margin is so slim that you can easily lose touch with this Buckeye team. First down and 17. A little blitz coming. Nice pass by Horvath over the middle to his tight end. Two yards short of the first down is Jake Nordine. They got back a good chunk of that yardage after the penalty. Yeah, Joe Novak's going to flip on the game film tomorrow, and he's going to look back and, and look at the first half, look at this drive early here in the second half, and he's going to say, hey, you know, we did some nice things on offense. And Garrett Wolf was given some to run the football. We, we dropped off a couple nice screen passes on the perimeter. We've gotten Nordine involved at tight end. And... Novak has really turned the program around. Six straight winning seasons. The play fake. And Horvath throws it away. And that might be a late hit on Jay Richardson. Number 99, Ohio State. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Defensive coordinator Jim Haycock, you could see his displeasure. Jim Tressel not real excited either. Richardson is going to close late. And there it is, a left hand up into the chin. Again, a pretty easy call to make for the officiating crew and one of the rare mistakes we've seen from the Buckeyes this afternoon. Moves the ball all the way down to the 22 yard line and the automatic first down. Last time they got this deep, they were able to earn a field goal. It's noisy down there on the field for Northern Illinois, but they simulated noise during the last week of practice, but nothing's like the real thing. This is Wolf dancing between the tackles down to the 13 yard line. A nice chunk of real estate gained by Wolf, Patterson, and Holman making the stop for the Buckeyes. Uh, Doug Free, the big left tackle. A lot of the scouts have him going as the number one pick in the draft coming out of the MAC conference. And he's very strong at the point of attack. Look at he slides off, actually gets two blocks on the play. Big number 70. And he is acquitted himself well in this football game against the Buckeye front. It's the first possession of the second half for Northern Illinois. And looking good so far. Wolf brought down behind the line of scrimmage at the 15-yard line by Marcus Freeman. A knee injury in the first game of last year caused him to miss the entire season. And he's part of the crew that's back at linebacker this year, hoping to uh, Make a name for themselves. And Jonesy, it looked like Ohio State, especially late in the second quarter, was going to blow this game open. And you, know, you look, Jim Tressel is on the sideline, and he's, you know, he's thinking, I may have to keep my starters in a little bit longer than I thought I was going to have to. And important drive here for both the offense of Northern Illinois and the Buckeye defense. Oh, and they put it on the ground. Horvath fumbled the snap, and they implode deep in Ohio State territory. An unfortunate event for Northern Illinois. Golson and Smith there to pounce on the quarterback. And on the loss, the Huskies not much of a shot to go on fourth down. They have to bring the field unit on the field. And there's disappointment. I know with Joe Novak, now they hit a field goal here. Again, you keep yourselves in the football game and you keep those Buckeye starters on the field which Jim Tressel is not looking forward to. Mendick in for a field goal, about 37. And he knocks it through, his second one of the afternoon, and it's 28 to 6. So they do get some points out of their first drive of the third quarter. Mendick drills at home. He's been consistent for them over the years. You're watching ESPN on ABC. You're on the goalpost truck. You're on the car. I'm on lookout. Berg, what are you wearing, spandex? Yeah, I got them out of my mom's drawer. It's very sexy. You think? No. God! Go, 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 go. Oh. This is 
is gonna look great in my yard. Bergwood? Is the strength of Allstate behind your favorite college football team? It has been all Colts today. Setting up again, third and five hey, now. You, come here. It's 28 to three. If you had an NFL Sunday ticket from Direct TV, you can watch up to 14 games every Sunday. So instead of watching this, you watch my brother Eli play against the Cowboys. Oh, I gotta run. <laughs> Actually, I think I'll pass. Pump fake. Touchdown! Buy NFL Sunday Ticket. Get four months of our best programming package for free. There's good TV, there's better TV, and then there's direct TV. The 23 flavors in every Dr. Pepper add up to so much taste. 23 is always on the tip of your tongue. So at the end of the 23rd quarter, it's all tied up 23-23. We'll be back after a brief 23-second timeout. Thanks, guys. Dr. Pepper and ESPN are giving you a chance to throw for a million dollars. Go to ESPN.com, keyword pepper, to enter. Because with 23 flavors in every Dr. Pepper, there's always more to it. September 12th, the Dancing with the Stars season premiere on ABC. Back at Ohio Stadium, the Buckeyes leading 28 to 6. Each team has had one possession offensively here in the third quarter. Northern Illinois connecting on a 37 yard field goal, courtesy of Joe Nendick a few moments ago. And Nendick will kick off with that shorter kicking tee by an inch this year. Turn, it's O'Neill. And O'Neill takes it out to the 45 yard line. And let's go back to New York for an update. Mark, here's our vote for the Pontiac game changing performance of the day. And it was a big day for Colt McCoy, making his debut as Vince Young's replacement. Threw three touchdowns, ran for another a week ahead of that Ohio State Texas rematch in Austin. To vote for your Pontiac game-changing performance, just log on to ESPN.com, keyword honey. All right, Matt, first down and 10 for Ohio State. Second offensive possession of the third quarter. Backs lining up out of the eye. Pittman is the deep back, and he gets the call. Pittman breaks it into the secondary. Down to the 43-yard line where Reeder makes the stop, the Huskies. Antonio Pittman gives you an interesting combination of skills from the tailback position. He finished off games against Michigan and Notre Dame late last year with big touchdowns. He has the speed to take it all the way, but he's also very comfortable running in between the tackles. And he loves to finish off runs. Get a good look at him getting his pad level down low and finishing off that run for a first down. First down and 10, approaching eight minutes to go in the third. A three receiver formation. Smith with all day on the post. Incomplete, intended for Ginn. Good coverage by Adriel Hansbro, one half of the Twins. And we just saw that update involving Texas. Now let's take a look at the ESPNU All League Standings review. Top. Ohio State, Notre Dame. Notre Dame playing tonight on ABC at 8 o'clock Eastern time against Georgia Tech. Texas, Ohio State next week. That's going to be a good one. And it's really the, the game of the year when you look at the regular regular season slate in college football. I'll tell you, I like that West Virginia Mountaineer oh. Club, too, or Rich Rodriguez's. Here's Pittman trying to bounce it outside, and he is bounced and brought down. At the 40 yard line, got about three on the play. It was 7.40 to go in the third. We would look at that top 10, Mark. You know, this is a season where, where you come in and all of the, the teams that really you give a shot to winning the BCS championship, they all have question marks. 
Uh, Texas, of course, Vince Young moves on. This Ohio State team, the defense, only two starters returning. The quarterback situation, along with Reg Reggie Bush and Lendale White out at USC, I think it's going to be very interesting, and I wouldn't be surprised to see a couple one-loss teams end up in the title game. Smith complete to the tight end goal. Bringing back images of Ricky Dudley. And it's uh, short of the first down by about two yards. Under seven minutes to go in the third. The fans calling to go for it, and Chris Wells comes onto the field. Now, this is an interesting decision. You don't pick up a lot by punting the football in terms of field position unless you can have a punt die inside the 10 or maybe even the five yard line. But if Ohio State doesn't pick up the first down here in Northern Illinois, you will see a little light at the end of the tunnel. Fourth and one. Here we go. Wells will get the call and the first down and then some. The freshman getting the job done down to the 26 yard line. Downing leading the way with a nice block from his right guard spot. And you kind of get a feeling that throughout this season, Jim Tressel is going to utilize the big man, the true freshman, in short yardage situations, goal line situations. I mean, he is a go to guy. Hey, he turned 18 just recently, and he has a man's body, folks. First down and 10. Again, always tough with freshmen how they handle the expectations. Did a nice job with that run again. Wells. Well, some tremendous work up front, especially on the right side of the, the Buckeye offensive line. Kirk Barton, I think he's almost a shoe in for first team all comp conference if he delivers on his potential. He's also an All American candidate. But you also have T.J. Downing, Schaefer, Raring at the at the guard positions, Dadish, the bell cow in the middle. Great work up front for the Buckeyes on this drive. Out of the eye this time. Hand up once again to Wells. Got about nine on that carry. Adriel Hansborough chopped them down. Boy, Chris Wells can run around people or through people or over people. Uh, we talked about Ohio State, how they can spread you out. But then they could go back to the traditional style of Ohio State football. And boom, the big left tackle coming down hard on the defensive front for Northern Illinois. That was a solid block. And Wells, the ability to pound the ball at you and take the ball out to the perimeter. Second down and one. Here's Wells again. Got the first down. And one tackle short of getting his second touchdown of the day. Reader making the stop. Kind of a throwback. I mean, you get the feel you're watching Byers or Vince Workman. <laughs> and some great backs. Eddie George. And you look at all the Heisman Trophy winners. Mark Jones. Oh. Five Heisman Trophy winners over the years. Two of those belonging to Archie Griffin. Two of those trophies. Six yeah. trophies total. I saw him at the football offices a couple of days ago. Impressive drive by the Buckeyes here. Wells still in. Wells gets the call and stops short of the end zone at about the two yard line. It'll be second down and goal. You know, the depth of this offensive team, Mark, really strikes you. They go three deep with big talent at running back. The wide receiver core with Ted Ginn Jr., Gonzalez. Some young hot shots, small Roy Hall, who we haven't seen today with the ankle. And then they got tremendous depth at that offensive line. I have to say that this offense of Jim Tressel's is a lot less conservative than some people may perceive it to be. And a lot of that has to do with Troy Smith and his versatility at quarterback. Second and goal. Wells stuck and he put it on the ground. Fumble recovered by Northern Illinois. Reader got it. Such is the tendency sometimes as freshmen. Tough to hang on to it sometimes. Pass protection and handing on to the football is one thing. Well, and when you play a true freshman running back, you worry about turnovers, you worry about blocking assignments. Northern Illinois 
with another chance to extend this football game. Bill Horvath and company will be back on the field late in the third quarter. Clear your inbox, clear your mind. The same email that's on your computer is now on your singular phone with one simple click. It's your email delivered. Get the new email ready Nokia phone for only $29.99. Singular, raising the bar. This is not good. What if I get hurt and can't work? Wait, I have Aflac. They give me cash to pay for groceries, the car, even the cable bill. Lucky me. Aflac. Ask about it at work. ESPN's College Football on ABC, brought to you by Pontiac. Go online to vote for this week's Pontiac game-changing performance. Taco Bell, think outside the bun. And Dr. Pepper, with 23 flavors in every Dr. Pepper, there's more to it. Taking a look back at the fumble, Northern Illinois still in this ball game, and Chris Wells going to run into the tight end, Stan White. As we said before the break, Mark, that's the risk you run of playing a true freshman tailback. You worry about ball security, you worry about blocking assignments, and this game not quite in the books. First down and ten for Northern Illinois from their own four. They give it to Wolf. Nice cutback. Not enough to elude two tacklers led by Alex Barrow. Approaching three and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Let's go down to Stacy Dales, who has a guest with him. I do have a guest, Mark. It is the head coach of the basketball team here at Ohio State, Thad Mata. First things first, coach, in the third year of probation after the NCAA violations in 99, what's the status of the program right now? Well, we're in great shape. We, we finally got to find out where we are, and, uh, you know, it is full speed ahead like we've done since the day we've got here. And, and uh, you know, the good thing is we get it behind us, and uh, I think the NCAA was very fair to us, and, and uh, we're moving forward. Now, you're known for your recruiting. You managed to snag the number one recruit in the nation, seven-footer Greg Oden. What's his status after surgery in June? Well, he's, he's doing great. I think he's a little bit ahead of progress, and, and uh, you know, it's a tendon injury, and, and the thing we want to do is make sure he's 100%. I, I'll never risk him. Uh, he's got too much at stake, so he's, he's doing well. We'll continue after this play, Mark. All right, Stacy. Northern Illinois, one of eight on third down conversions today. They dearly need this one, and it's almost intercepted by Malcolm Jenkins as a result. Fourth down coming up, three and out. Let's go back to Stacy. Now, Coach, i got to ask you, you lose four starters, and you're ranked in the top ten right now. How do you feel about that? Well, you know, I tell people, it's, it's like when my kids are born, I look at them in their crib and, and see if they're going to be doctors or lawyers. Uh, we we got a lot of growing to do, and we've got a great schedule ahead of us, and I think it's going to help us make us better. Great. Thanks a lot for joining us, Dad. Thank you, Stacy. Mark. All right, Stacy. Hey, not only Greg Oden coming in, but uh, Mike Conley Jr. A couple of great roots out of Indiana. Lawrence North High School, and uh, that might have been a great job. Has some great ties in that area. Here comes the punt. Dick Benner gets off a low kick. Comes down to Gonzalez at midfield. Anthony Gonzalez 
Tackled at the 38-yard line. Good starting field position for the Buckeyes. The Ohio State defense has been stout when it's counted the most today. Tucking their hats and bringing it. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Woo! Woo! See, kids? Isn't this better than flying? Yeah. Look, vagabonds. Good news, your credit card miles, huh? Yeah, they blacked us out. You should switch to Capital One. What well, smells like old cheese? Oh, that's just Earl. Oh, it's just Earl, honey. Switch to Capital One's new No Hassle Rewards. Now with no blackout dates, no earn caps, and no miles expiration. This is our stop. You want to hit the ground rolling? Okay. Oh. Ooh, what's in your wallet? <laughs> I like these new Nacho Crunch grilled stuffed burritos. Those crunchy little tortilla strips in them. Kind of fun. You know, don't let Dave hear. You know, he always has to be the fun guy. Hey, guys, what's up? <laughs> What's that? Sounds crunchy. <sighs> it's fun, isn't it? Taco Bell's new Nacho Crunch Grilled Stuffed Burrito. Carne asada steak, warm nacho cheese sauce, and crunchy tortilla strips wrapped up and grilled to go. For the burrito that's fun to crunch. Crunchy. <laughs> Think outside the bun. <laughs> There's no way to hide it. If you drive drunk, we will find you. Cops everywhere are stepping up enforcement and cracking down like never before. Sir, have you been drinking tonight? Sir, have you been drinking this evening? Sir, have you been drinking tonight? Make no mistake, you will get caught and you will be arrested over the limit under arrest. This fall, experience multiple personalities. Is there anything else anyone wants to talk about? Yes, I always yeah. 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 Great, great. Yeah. We'll, we'll get to that next session. Help Me Help You premieres Tuesday, September 26th, only on EBC. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Welcome back, everyone, to Columbus. This day has been colored garnet and gray so far. Buckeyes with the lead, first and 10. From Northern Illinois' 38-yard line. Troy Smith dropping back to pass. Complete for the first down. Coming back to the ball nicely was Anthony Gonzalez with 2.05 to go in the third quarter. Gonzalez ready to uh, pick up the slack in the absence of Stonio Holmes, who's moved on to the NFL. And, and what really scares you about Troy Smith, fine. He can get the ball over the top, throws the deep bell ball exceptionally well but he also hits the balls underneath well and and he's and he's very accurate on the out routes Anthony Gonzalez and Buckeye fans know he's made a couple big catches against Michigan looks like he's lined up five receivers on the play out of the backfield it's small and small takes it down to the 18 yard line close to a first down for Ohio State but Ohio State fans getting back to Gonzalez. He's made a couple big catches in the last two Michigan games and has very deceptive sm speed. And when you talk talent in the wide receiver core for Ohio State, granted, you've, you've lost Santonio Holmes, but I think Gonzalez and a couple of the young players outside are going to really pick up the slack. Now Pittman is back in a tailback after the Chris Wells fumble. And Pittman cuts it back against the grain and picks up the first down near the 10 yard line. Right at the 10 yard line. Let's go downstairs to Stacy. Well, guys, don't forget Anthony Gonzalez does sleep in a very special tent. It's called the Hypoxic Altitude Simulation Training System. Basically, pumps oxygen into the tent so that the body can safely increase its endurance and short recovery. It really has helped him, he says, on the football field. I said, well, what about the argument that it's all in your head? And he said to me, well, even if it is all in my head, the thing works, and I'm going to use it for the rest of my life, Mark. <laughs> yeah, it's not cheap. It run him about five Gs, $5,000, but it, had, it says it gives him more endurance. We'll find out as the season wears on. Underneath, complete to the tight end, Nickel. Lunging for the touchdown. Did he get it? No. He stopped up about a half a yard short. Rory Nickel dragging that 250 pound frame within inches of the goal line. Picked up nine. 
Well, this is just a simple crossing route underneath, and sometimes the crossing routes are the most effective, especially for tight ends. Boy, Troy Smith has a nice feel in the pocket, his timing, and he gets set up, and, and Troy Smith, we've heard so much about his feet and his threat as a runner. He's so accurate as a passer as well. It's Pittman. Still no signal. And looks like they're going to mark it short of the end zone by mere inches. Antonio Pittman getting the call. He had seven rushing touchdowns a season ago. Oh, looked like he might have broken the pain. Goal line there. And interesting rule change in terms of challenges for coaches this year, Mark Jones. Both both teams will have one challenge in college football. Right. And up 28 to 6. I'm not sure Jim Tressel would even be interested in challenging, even if he thought Pittman. Yep, one Got across video. the goal line. One challenge per team per game. Our presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations and watching ESPN on ABC. Your SUV is designed to go off road, but sometimes the off road comes to you. Introducing the new Goodyear Forterra with Silent Armor technology, made with SUV drivers in mind. A layer made with Kevlar means the Forterra is tough and rugged, and extra cushioning means the Forterra rides quietly and comfortably. The new Goodyear Forterra with Silent Armor technology. Go confidently on the wings of Goodyear. The summer's almost over, but the Pontiac final summer... ABC presents a television movie event all of America should see. We had him. We're responsible. The Path to 9-11, presented without interruption, Sunday, September 10th at 8, 7 central, only on ABC. Pure discretion advised. Something told me it was all. There comes a time when you're ready to move on to something better. Like the golden, rich flavor of Miller Genuine Draft. It's beer. Grown up. See the latest must-have technology at the Technocharged Acura RDX Tour, September 12th at Rock Bar and Grill. Want a VIP pass? Register now at abc7chicago.com, courtesy of the all-new Technocharged Acura RDX. How to improve the Chicago school system? Join Harry Porterfield, Jim Rose, Evelyn Holmes, and a panel of education experts. People, places, and things closing the gap. Tonight at 6.30 on ABC7. Hear me. Something told me it was all. There comes a time when you're ready to Hear move me. on to something better. Like the golden, rich flavor of Miller Genuine Draft. It's beer. Grown up. Ron Majors and Cheryl Burton, weeknights at 5. Northern Illinois be strong in the shadows of the goalposts, their own goalposts, defending their end zone right now. Ohio State inches away from the goal line. Third and goal coming up for the Buckeyes. No doubt they've had their opportunities to slice into the lead, but they have not taken advantage. And now the Buckeyes knocking on the door again. First play of the fourth quarter, Pittman lunging in, scores. Antonio Pittman with the ninth rushing touchdown of his career. Too many times, Northern Illinois allowing Troy Smith and his potent offense to work with a short field. Antonio Pittman, a very reliable back in short yardage situations, punches it into the goal. 
And Petri knocks through the extra point for the Buckeyes. It's 35 to 6. You know, funny story about Pittman. He's figured out where to go now on campus, certainly knows how to find his way to the end zone, but on the first day of spring practice as a freshman a couple of years ago, actually got lost on campus on the bus system and uh, missed all but the last five minutes of practice. Not exactly the type of first <laughs> impression you want to make with your head coach. Watching him at the end of the Fiesta Bowl game against Notre Dame, he did not get lost on that 60-yard touchdown run that put the game away. And a pretty impressive job running down near the goal line on the big touchdown to beat the Wolverines last November. One more look. Eyes up, pad level low. And a nice job of running through some traffic down near the goal line, punching it into the end zone. Antonio Pittman, you don't become a 1,300-yard rusher without great talent and great instincts. And I have a feeling, even with the talent behind him, he's going to be the number one back this year for the Buckeyes. You mentioned Archie Griffin earlier. Only Griffin ran for more yards as a sophomore. Here's Davis on the return. Britt Davis trying to get outside and forced out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Hey, next week, Ohio State, all right, folks? Saturday Night Football, a rematch. Jim Trestle's crew heads down to Austin in the shadows of Sixth Street to tangle with Mac Brown's Texas Longhorns, the defending champs. Last year's winner, hey, rode the momentum all the way to the national championship. See what happens this time around when two of college football's most storied programs hook up. Next Saturday, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. This was the game-deciding touchdown a season ago when Vince Young passed it into the end zone. And a great catch by Swede on the play, 24 yards. And that was the game-winning score for Texas. I don't think that the Buckeyes haven't forgotten that either. Here's Wolf in the loose field. Garrett Wolf, one man to beat. And pulled down finally by Brandon Mitchell at the 20 yard line. Nordine gave him a nice block to spring him loose. Now Garrett Wolf is not intimidated playing against Big Ten teams. A year ago in the opener against Michigan, ran for over 100 yards. Great feel for when to make the cut. And then he's got 4 4 5 speed. Getting some nice blocking on the right side of the line. I'll tell you what, Garrett Wolf is going to make more than one All-American team before this year. No doubt, 141 with the meter running, adding to his total here. Wolf tiptoeing down the sidelines. Got a good block and maybe a hold on Davis. That last run of Wolf's went for 51 yards. We'll have to wait and see if this one stands. Britt Davis, number seven, wide receiver for Northern Illinois. Might have been caught on the perimeter. That last 51-yard run, as this one's going to come back, gives him 15 career 100-yard rushing games. On the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the pile. And I think that was Britt Davis, the yeah. wide receiver, working against the Antonio Smith, the former walk-on for Ohio State. And there it is, a right hand full of jersey if you're going to get some jersey you're going to have to let go quickly right. and another mistake by northern illinois they have moved the ball at times but have not been able to finish off drives and you got to finish drives against the buckeyes especially when you're in columbus first and 12. pass underneath Complete to Clinton. Good job, good job. Good job. Good and Clinton mentioned as maybe the biggest surprise on the offensive side of the ball for Northern Illinois in the summer practice sessions. Nice catch there to pick up a few. Gives him second down and about eight to go. Well, time permitting, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental post game report. John Craig and Doug will have scores and highlights from around the country. We'll have to hit Doug up for some. Uh, some free meals when we go to Boston College <laughs> next week to BC against Clemson. Looking forward to it. Second down and eight. Horvath buying some time and throwing it out of bounds. Good pressure up front by Pitcock. Well, really a tough assignment 
for Phil Horvath to come into Columbus, the number one rated team in the country. You know Ohio State is going to fill those holes in their defense with talent. I mean, Jones, you were looking through the press guide here at Ohio State, and you turn, every time you turn the page, you see a parade All-American, a Gatorade Player of the Year. Ohio State never a lack of talent, both offensively and defensively. On third down and eight, they run the stretch play to Wolf. There's a flag down, and Wolf goes down at about the 18-yard line, brought down by Anderson Russell. Russell coming up from his free safety spot to make the stop. You know, a year ago, Garrett Wolf had two of the top three rushing performances in the country. Ran for 270 yards in the MAC championship game against yeah. Akron. Had a 277-yard game. Holding. Number 86, Northern Illinois. The penalty is the top. Fourth out. Penalty against Nordine. The top performance of the year was yeah. Reggie Bush, 294 against Fresno State in that Saturday night highlight reel. You see the bottom of the screen. And the hell pretty good that time. Fourth and nine, no choice but to go for it. Davis in motion. Horvath throws a dart and a great catch by Jared Carter, able to hang on to it and take the hit at the same time from O'Neill. And it's a first down for Northern Illinois. First and goal from the five. Now, this is an excellent job by Carter catching the ball in traffic. And he's really a steady force on this wide receiver core. Took a shot to the head from Brandon Mitchell, the safety. He was closing in a hurry. But a nice ball from Horvath and a nice job by his young wide receiver securing the ball in the seam. First and goal for the Huskies. They've got to get to work. Wolf brought down about two yards behind the line of scrimmage by David Patterson. The coaches say has big playability up front. Patterson and Pitcock, the only returning starters, two leaders of that defensive front. Patterson a year ago, they really employed an, an interesting strategy. That Jim Haycock, the defensive coordinator, would start Patterson outside for one series at defensive end and then move him down inside to defensive tackle. Pitcock, you see his counterpart there. Pitcock, 295 pounds, has a 36-inch vertical. Wow. Renowned as the strongest player on the team. Second and goal for Northern Illinois. Out of the backfield, Wolf, nice catch. Had to concentrate to rein it in. And is tackled at the six-yard line by Jay Richardson. It'll be third and goal now for Northern Illinois. Now that's a beautiful play by Garrett Wolf. His team's down 35 to 6 here in the fourth quarter, but maintaining his concentration. This is basically a one handed grab. And I can see why Joe Novak wants to get him more involved in the passing game this year. Ultimately, Northern Illinois wants to win the MAC championship. Wolf was the only MAC player to garner Heisman votes a year ago. Third and goal here. Come with pressure. It's complete, but short of the first down to Britt Davis, hit immediately by Jenkins, and it's fourth and goal. Horvath was lucky to get that pass off in time. Uh, Rolston, right defensive end, was in Horvath's face almost after the snap of the football, and Horvath showed some courage. You don't hit 70% of your balls without playing tough at the quarterback position, and sometimes you have to hold on the ball late. Missed four games last year at the end of the season because of a broken left hand. Showing no ill effects of that today. Fourth and goal for the Huskies. And they call a timeout. And we'll take one with them with 10.32 to go in the fourth quarter. Looking for their first touchdown of the game. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Intelligent key technology that knows you. Seats that hug you. A ride that spoils you. The 
Nexon Maxima, part of the next generation of Nissan thinking. There are some crazy blades out there, so reach for the ultimate bomb. Replenishing aftershave bomb with Care Protect soothes and repairs the damage from shaving. Only from Nivea for Men. Man, I just seen Wes walking through the scene right here. No, 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 I no, dropped no. it right over the top. Uh, I threw a BB, picked the peanut off his head. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get your roll on, Pelt. Get your roll on, Pelt. Get your roll on. Get your roll on, baby. Now hit it. Bam! Madden NFL 2007. Rated E for everyone. EA Sports. It's in the game. Team Colors Paint, you can get the official colors of your favorite team. Sir, you're all set. Whoever that may be. Exclusively from Glidden and only at the Home Depot. There are some crazy blades out there, so reach for the ultimate bomb. Replenishing aftershave bomb with Care Protect soothes and repairs the damage from shaving. Only from Nivea for Men. Tuesday, September 12th, the Dancing with the Stars season premiere on ABC. The clearing skies over Ohio Stadium in Columbus. Welcome back to Dr. DePecker's college football kickoff weekend on ABC. Fourth down and goal coming up for Northern Illinois, looking for their first touchdown of the day. Here in the fourth quarter. Garrett Wolf is the lone back beside Horvath, the quarterback. They're going to throw to Wolf. Got to make a couple of moves, and he does, scoring the touchdown. What a shake. He stopped on a dime and didn't leave Ohio State any change. Nice move by Garrett Wolf. Well, it took almost three and a third quarters to score, but they finally did it. Well, I think Northern Illinois is going to go for two. And on that touchdown, Garrett Wolf had three defenders to beat. <laughs> now, they, they caught Ohio State in a blitz. But Marcus Freeman, the strong side linebacker, and Brandon Mitchell, the strong safety, had Wolf dead to rights. And what a testament to the ability of Wolf to get into the end zone. Here they go for the two-point conversion. Horvath got rocked back at the 10-yard line and sacked. It's no good. Good tackle by Brandon Mitchell. Well, Garrett Wolf with a nice move. Beat three guys. He and Troy Smith are friends, but they don't call it show friends. They call it show business. This is ESPN on ABC. We are an elite unit. Our primary target, Frank Costello. He won't be paid as a regular cop. So what do I do? You will not ever know the identity of undercover people. Get your hands off me. We got a cop in my crew. He's going to find out who I am and kill me. Do you want him to chop me up and feed me the poor? I can get the rat. If you don't, it won't be me who pays. The Departed, a Martin Scorsese picture. Rated R, starts October 6th. Nissan Maxima with CVT, part of the next generation of Nissan thinking. Subway Dinner Theater presents The Unfed. Uh, hungry. Uh, uh, hungry. Uh. Oh, 
I smell a blockbuster. And for dinner, Subway restaurants. Where you can get freshly baked bread every day. And with five delicious types to choose from, the whole family will be happy. Subway, eat, eat. ESPN's well, we're going to show the snap of the football and the throw and then freeze it when he catches it. Okay, good. Okay, good. You move through the world. EA Sports Madden NFL 2007. Rated E for everyone. In stores now. And the Home Depot. You can do it. We can help. Welcome back, everyone, to a sold-out Ohio Stadium. With the Buckeyes surrendering their first touchdown of the year just a few moments ago. Garrett Wolf with a shifty run into the end zone, and here come the Buckeyes on the kickoff return. There's a flag down at the 30-yard line, and that's where Ginn runs out of bounds. Garrett Wolf with the touchdown a few moments ago, and you always hear coaches say, as a cliche almost, Holding number 39 offense of the receiving team, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, first down. Now this, he makes you miss. <laughs> yeah, he does make you miss. And this is a special play by Garrett Wolf. Watch the defenders here for Ohio State. You got one, two, three to beat to get into the end zone. And this is a fourth down play. He puts a nice move on Freeman and Mitchell, the safety, and then just runs through Malcolm Jenkins the cornerback and into the end zone. Special athlete. First down and 10. Let's see what Troy Smith does for the Buckeyes coming back the other way. Pittman gets the call over the right side. Running over Downing and Barton. The left guard and left tackle. Wolf getting a breather. Putting up some impressive numbers today. 145 yards rushing. 114 and receiving. What's that, 259? <laughs> I wasn't a math major, but that's a pretty good number. And you go back to the opener a year ago in Ann Arbor, he ran for 148 yards and then followed it up with 245 yards and three touchdowns against Northwestern. And we all know what type of year Northwestern had a year ago. First down and 10 after that Pittman run. Pittman gets it again. Trying to take it to the edge and brought down to the 34 yard line. It's interesting that Jim Tressel talked about Pittman and expressed his anxiety over facing Garrett Wolf. And he said, you know, we had three common opponents with Northern Illinois last year Michigan, Northwestern, and Miami, Ohio. And he said that uh, Wolf's stats were uh, noticeably higher than Pittman's. Not saying that Pittman can't run, but that just really put home his point that they've got to keep an eye on number one. Well and I also think it indicates a change in game plan offensively for Ohio State over years past where this team will come out and they'll try to throw the ball over the top and get a lead on you early and then they'll line up in the eye and pound at you later on in the football game. Speaking of going up top Ginn on the post wide open. Brought down at the nine yard line by Alba Hansbro. And it's first and goal for Ohio State. On cue, Dick Norrie. <laughs> Talked about opening up. That's just what they did here. Well, Joe Novak and his team have been talking about playing cushion, not letting Ted Ginn Jr. and his wide receiver mates run by them in the secondary, but you cannot simulate that type of speed on the practice field. And how about the ability of Troy Smith to hit wide receivers in stride when they're open down the football field. We saw it last year against Michigan. We saw it in the Fiesta Bowl, and he has been deadly accurate this afternoon. On the run, this is Chris Wells back in the ball game for the first series since fumbling a little bit earlier. It's going to be second down and goal. And it's tough to think of a quarterback at this level at this high profile of program that has improved as much in one wow. year as Troy Smith. Unbelievable. And you know, here comes Justin Zwick, who has starting experience of his own, started during the two game suspension. Mark, that two game suspension, I think it might have been a different story last year against Texas right. if Troy Smith would have been playing in the two games that he missed. Second and goal, Zwick hands it off, and they fumble it. 
You see it happen when you switch quarterbacks often. They're going to whistle it dead. But Zwick and Dadish couldn't get on the same page that time, and they paid dearly for it. Now we had a lot of rain before the football game, and Zwick coming in in the middle of a drive. I'm never a big fan of changing quarterbacks in the middle of a drive. Let the drive be completed and then bring in the quarterback. Tough to come in, even on a running play for a quarterback, and he got his feet caught up right. either with his center, Dadish, or the left guard, Tim Schaefer. Now that had nothing to do with the snap, actually, as I... As Wick just before. lost his footing. Yeah. He lost his footing, and you know, for a quarterback to come in, you want to be ready on the sidelines. You want to take a couple snaps. I'm sure Zwick was working with the center, but that's a tough task coming in cold in the middle of a drive. Northern Illinois with the ball now at their own seven-yard line. Dan Nicholson now has entered for his first series for Northern Illinois. Nicholson played the last four games of the season last year. Hands it off to Wolf. That's a good play usually. Wolf using his blocker well. Rick Davis on the corner. And got a first down for the Huskies out at the 21-yard line. Dan Nicholson, a 6'2 sophomore, was in a heated competition for that starting quarterbacking job during the summer, finally giving way to Phil Horvath. But uh, he stepped in last year after Horvath broke his left hand and led them to wins over Central Michigan, won at Toledo and against Western Michigan, and led them to within a point of winning in the MAC championship game. First down and 10. Horvath watching now. Out of the backfield, incomplete. Intended for Garrett Wolf. Look at their numbers and a uh, little exuberance, over exuberance, and a little emotion there with Wolf and uh, Jenkins on the corner. Here's a look at the two quarterbacks. Both of them putting up great numbers. Uh, when you compare and contrast them, they say that Nicholson's arm might be a little more lively, and he has a little bit more of a, a riverboat gambler mentality to him. Uh, he has the full toolbox and can make some of the throws that Horvath can't make, but Horvath, there's no substitute for throwing the ball on time. I think we'll see Horvath start the next game. He did not look bad at quarterback. Made a couple mistakes, but that's a baptism by fire when you come in and start at Columbus. Competes his first pass there to Davis out at the 27-yard line. They're about four yards short of the first down with 7-11 to go here in the fourth quarter. It was all Ohio State early in this game. But four touchdowns up on the board in the first half. Yeah, a bit of a story emerging in college football, Mark, with quarterbacks coming in off the bench and, and playing exceptionally well. We saw it last year at Arizona State. We certainly saw it at Utah, and, and Nicholson coming off the bench to lead this team to the MAC championship down the wire. Pretty impressive, hitting 61% a year ago. There is third down and three. Only converted once today on third downs. Handed off to Wolf, and Wolf comes up short of the first down at the 30-yard line. Larry Grant making the stop on the play. And you're if, if you're in a rush this year, Dave Nori. You got to deal with the clock situation. It's it's a little bit different. They're running the clock as soon as the ball is spotted and the referee feels it's it's time to whistle it. And that's been a little bit of a point of contention with some of the head coaches so far. Well, and the rule changes after a change of possession. They're going to go ahead and they're going to roll the clock, the game clock, after they spot the ball and they blow the ball ready for play. The other change that involves a clock, obviously, is the kickoff. Now the clock will start when foot meets football as opposed to when the return man picks it up but it's going to create some awkward situations and difficult situations for offenses that are trailing at the end of football games to get out on the field and not lose time on the clock. Garrett Wolf converts for the third time on fourth down today with 538 to go here in the fourth quarter. Tonight don't miss the premiere Saturday night football folks Notre Dame and Brady Quinn taking on Georgia Tech. And is Johnson one of the best receivers you've ever seen or what? Now, had, this year anyway. I've had a <laughs> chance to, to watch Calvin Johnson in person three four times, including the bowl game last year against Utah out in San Francisco. And the Utes did a pretty good job on Calvin Johnson. But you talk to pro scouts, and they say there is one guy that stands out in terms of talent and 
how early he'll go in the NFL draft come next spring, and, and that's Calvin Johnson. Right? Oh, nice throw, but it's incomplete at the 40-yard line. And speaking of that game tonight, here's our IBM Star Watch, and it is the Notre Dame quarterback Brady Quinn. Put up some great numbers last year. Boy, was there any question watching that Notre Dame fighting Irish offense with Charlie Weiss at the helm. You saw the way the wide receivers ran their routes, their body position when the ball arrived, the quarterbacking of Brady Quinn. I mean, that was an offense early on, you could tell, was being coached by Charlie Weiss. Across midfield and brought down at the 47 yard line is Clanton. Don't forget that Notre Dame Georgia Tech game at 8 o'clock Eastern tonight, the premiere of Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brent Musburger, Kirk Curb Street, Bob Davey on the JOB with 5.05 to go here, though, first. And the Fighting Irish. Fighting Irish cannot go into that game and take it for granted that they're going to come out with a win. You know, like, remember what Georgia Tech did to a very good Auburn game in the right. opener a year ago. Chan Gailey with a brand new contract down there in Atlanta. First down and 10 for Northern Illinois. Pass incomplete at the 45 yard line for a West Virginia Mountaineer update. Let's go back to Matt Weiner in our studio, studio in New York. And Mark, time for a singular All America Player of the Week update. Steve Slayton has run himself into the competition. 28 carries, 188 yards, and counting with a pair of touchdowns. His day is still not done. Text vote to 87654 on your singular wireless phone to vote for a chance at a trap to the national title. All right, Matt, back here at second and 10. And Clanton got rocked by Dellinger. Clock running with 4.34 to go now in the fourth quarter play. Back to the timing issue when they stop and start the clock, the rule changes. Uh, the average game last year lasted about three hours and 20 minutes. Optimally, they would like it to be around three hours. Now, coaches were given the opportunity to comment during the comment period regarding the new rules. Uh, the rules committee didn't receive any, and the uh, changes were approved in March. So far, the coaches have been uh, very vociferous in their disagreement with the new rule. At least some have. Nicholson sacked back at the 40-yard line by Lawrence Wilson. Lawrence Wilson, one of those guys looking to make a mark on the defense. Started the bowl game last year in the Fiesta Bowl against Notre Dame as a true freshman. Now, Lawrence Wilson, they talk about this young man in the mold of a Will Smith. Now the great defensive end that played on the Buckeye National Championship team in 2002, and he has all the tools. You can't teach closing ability, and what a frame. I mean, he looks, <laughs> he's one of those all airport team guys where you look at his frame and he looks pretty impressive on the hook. <laughs> and in the airport terminal. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> High spiral that comes down to Ginn at the 16-yard line. Look out. Teddy Ginn has some serious intentions here. Already with a couple of touchdowns today. Takes this one out to the 37-yard line. You know what happens? Sometimes you get a little too much Ginn and juice, and you start walking crooked. Northern Illinois has had too much of him today. You're watching ESPN on ABC. Key technology that knows you. Seats that hug you. A ride that spoils you. The next Nissan Maxima, part of the next generation of Nissan thinking. I've trained for this my whole life. I cannot fail. I will not fail because I am one with a can. Dr. Pepper has given you a shot at a million dollars, but first you gotta get past me. Log on to ESPN.com, keyword pepper. Beat me at College Pick'em and you could be passing for the million live at the Big 12 and ACC Championship Games Saturday, December 2nd on ABC.
Welcome back to Columbus. Now let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Roy Smith was a beacon for this Ohio State Buckeye offense. To Gonzalez for the touchdown. Great day passing for him. Pittman going over 100 yards and a touchdown rushing. And for Northern Illinois, Garrett Wolf. Good total yardage and uh, a few moments of uh, introspection right now. Getting away from things a little bit and thinking over what could have been, what might have been this afternoon for his Huskies. Maurice Wells on the carry for Ohio State. Wells made it out to the 45, got about seven on the play. It was interesting to see Garrett Wolf come in the stadium yesterday during the walkthrough. Stood all the way on the other side of the field, away from his teammates, had his headphones on, was walking up and down, and really thoughtful, really deep in thought, introspective, and uh, when he came back over to the other side of the field, I asked him, what are you listening to? You just getting psyched up? He goes, no, just, just finding my calm spot, trying to catch my vibe. He, listening to a little stone, he said. He considers himself a, a neoclassical type of music listener. A little different. Second and three to go. Reese Wells brought down. Yard behind the line of scrimmage. Well, next week, Saturday Night Football features the rematch we've all been waiting for. Ohio State goes into Austin to tangle with Mac Brown and the national champs from Texas. Last year's winner of this game rode the momentum all the way to the national championship. See what happens this time around when two college football's most storied programs hook up next Saturday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC. College football lives here. We're going to be reading and hearing a lot about Ohio State's offense against that tremendous defense of the Longhorns down in Austin. Pass complete to Dukes. And Dukes making his first catch of the afternoon. Down to the 45-yard line. First down and 10. 133 to go. Hey, what do you think about Texas' situation this year without Vince Young? That's, that's a big piece missing. Well, Vince Young is the most dynamic quarterback I've seen at that position in a long, long time. And Colt McCoy... Now, there's some quarterbacks that you ask to go out and win games for you. I think there are going to be times this year, maybe even the majority year, where Texas will say, Colton McCoy, don't go out and lose the football game for us. Interesting. He's going to have to make some plays next week. Uh, he's going to have to make enough plays in the pass game to keep Texas and all their offensive options wide open on offense. Maurice Wells with the carry that time for the Buckeyes as we go under one minute to play. Joe Novak telling us yesterday that this is all about us being able to win the Mac this season. If we come out of Ohio State feeling somewhat good about ourselves, we consider ourselves pretty fortunate. Second down and seven. No shame in losing on the road against the number one team in the country. Zwick completes the pass to the 35-yard line to Ray Small out of Glenville High School. Well, you have to credit Northern Illinois for staying in this ball game. There are a couple opportunities there where they could have really let this game turn into a blowout. And they continued to fight in the second half, and I think they made this a respectable football game. They were never in it, but they kept playing hard. Well, 10 seconds to go. This one is cooked, glazed, and ready to be sliced as Ohio State will win its first game of the season here at Ohio Stadium. 35 to 12 with an offensive explosion in the first half of the ball game. We didn't catch the Buckeyes looking ahead to Texas, Mark. 35-12 the final. We'll be back with some final thoughts after this break and get some words from head coach Jim Tressel. 
Intelligent key technology that knows you. Seats that hug you. A ride that spoils you. The next Nissan Maxima. Part of the next generation of Nissan thinking. Their greatest desire is to be the best. Millions of fans have watched them compete. Displaying unshakable drive and unmistakable talent, they've inspired future generations to dream big. And above all, they've made us proud on and off the field. I'm Commissioner Jim Delaney, and that's our Big Ten story. Celebrating women's athletics and 25 years of Big Ten women's championships. Under some lugubrious skies here at Ohio Stadium in Columbus, the Buckeyes nothing but, not, not even close to gloomy on this day, 35 to 12 victors over Northern Illinois. And they got out early and never looked back. One of the big games and one of the big plays early, Troy Smith to Ted Ginn Jr. That was their second touchdown hookup of the afternoon, and that pretty much set the tone of what was to come. And let's go downstairs to Stacey Dales. Coach, how does Troy Smith stack up against some of the other quarterbacks you've coached? Uh, Troy is a special kid. He's very competitive. I think he can make all the throws. Uh, you know, he's a threat with his feet as well. Uh, he's pretty good. We'll find out next week just how good. One complete game from this defense. What did you see that you liked? You know, we played a lot of guys, and there's going to be a ton to learn from. Uh, we got sloppy when you get it a little bit ahead. It's disappointing, but uh, it'll be a good learning game. Game one is over. Game two is Texas next week. What are your early thoughts? Well, it'll be a tremendous opportunity for us. What an experience. Our kids will remember this one forever. Thanks, Coach. Congratulations. We have Troy Smith with us as well. Troy, what is it that makes you so special? <clears throat> I wouldn't say it's anything, you know, particularly that I do. I give everything to my teammates. Mm -hmm. If, you know, those other 10 guys wouldn't be on the field with me, helping me out, I wouldn't be able to be the player that I am. What's it like to throw the ball to Ted Ginn Jr.? Uh, it's, a, it's a rush. It's a thrill, you know. Uh, his speed and his, his knowledge of the game is what separates him from every receiver, I think. And lastly, what is it about this team that makes it a potential national champion? Uh, <clears throat> the camaraderie that we have. You know, we got 17 fifth-year seniors, and that's going to play a huge part in this whole season. Congratulations, Troy. Back up to you, Mark. All right, Stacy. there is a special vibe here on the banks of the Olentangy River in Columbus. Troy Smith leading the way along with Ginn and Gonzalez and Pittman. They sing the school song, and why not? It was a good day. Harmon, Ohio is the chorus ringing down from the field and from the stands. Today's Chevrolet players of the game are Garrett Wolf of Northern Illinois and Troy Smith of Ohio State. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. For David Norrie and Stacey Dales, I'm Mark Jones saying so long from Columbus, Ohio, 35-12, our final score. Right now, we're going to join John Saunders in our studios in New York. All right, Mark, thanks a lot. Time now for bonus coverage. Rutgers, Doug Flutie's surprise team of the year against North Carolina. They have the lead, although Carolina has just scored to pull to within 21-16. But Daly, he paused and said, I think we'll find out together. And right now, gentlemen, he's got a little bit of John Elway in him. I am feeling there's a little more of wanted competition than question of who the quarterback was. <laughs> no, it, it, I really exactly, do. and it makes both guys better. Yeah. But uh, there's no doubt. Talking to Frank Signetti, he was going to go with Joe Daly in this football game, and, and it would take a, 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 a huge act of just a disastrous performance to have Camp Sexton in there. We welcome you joining us from the Northern Illinois Ohio game. Gary Thorne along with Andre Ware and Todd Harris. Rutgers the football in the lead. North Carolina needs to get it back. That'll be complete up to about the 35. Brian Leonard out of the backfield hit by Quentin Pearson. And Rutgers now needs to gain a couple of first downs. You know what I like about that call? Right there, you're not trying to sit on the football and run the clock out. You are continuing to play football as if it's 0-0. And I think that's the attitude you got to take. 
Keep moving the football. Do what you've done at the, to this point. Mix the pass with the run. Keep the defense off balance, but turn the clock is what Rutgers is doing now. Second down and five. Mike Teal, the Rutgers quarterback, has had a fine day. Great day for Ray Rice, the running back. 27, closing in uh, the 200-yard uh, rushing game. And he will carry and uh, will gain a couple, but a big play by the defense of North Carolina. They need the football back here. They've got their timeouts remaining. Each team has three. They've used none of them here in the second half. Edwards in on the hit. You know, you like to say this is the biggest play in a football game. All plays are big in a football game. But this is a huge play in this football game for North Carolina defensively. They've got to stop here. And if they do what it does, it provides them with a lot of time and a couple of timeouts. We know in college football, that's a lot of time. A lot of time. 344, an eternity when you have two timeouts to go along with it. And I take it back. Carolina had used one, so they've got two left. Rutgers has three. And a timeout on the field. That's being used right here. It is 21-16 Rutgers, but not over. We are an elite unit. Our primary target, Frank Costello. You won't be paid as a regular cop. So what do I do? You will not ever know the identity of undercover people. Get your hands off me. We got a cop in my crew. He's going to find out who I am and kill me. You wanted to chop me up and feed me the poor? I can get the rat. If you don't, it won't be me who pays. The Departed, a Martin Scorsese picture. Rated R, starts October 6th. Nissan Maxima with CVT, part of the next generation of Nissan thinking. Subway Dinner Theater presents The Unfed. Uh, hungry. Uh, uh, hungry. Uh. Ooh, I smell a black. And for dinner, Subway restaurants! Where you can get freshly baked bread every day. And with five delicious types to choose from, the whole family will be happy. Subway, eat fresh! ESPN's College Football on ABC. Brought to you by Nissan, who invites you to shift the way you move through the world. EA Sports Madden NFL 2007, rated E for everyone, in stores now. And the Home Depot. You can do it, we can help. Rutgers has the football. The football players of North Carolina revving their fans up during the break. 21-16, Rutgers leading. Third down. Rutgers is 8 for 11 on third downs. This is a third and three. Rutgers has the football. North Carolina with the momentum. Brian Leonard in the backfield. They split two receivers to the right side. Teal will work out of the shotgun. And incomplete. And it stops the clock. And it brings up a punting situation. Very surprised, Gary, that they don't go to one of the two playmakers and Leonard or Rice in that situation. They try to go outside to the youngster, redshirt freshman Dennis Campbell to pick up the first down. Teal there, an incomplete pass, and you knew this place was going to erupt if North Carolina held up defensively. All right, it'll be Brandon Tate standing back for Carolina at the 25-yard line. It is the first time today that we have had a three and out by Rutgers. First time. Joe Radigan on to do putting. Only the third time. Puts the ball with a great big high spiral. Back it will bounce and goes out of bounds at about the 27 yard line. North Carolina gets a chance on the offense. A chance to win this football game. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC. Intelligent key technology that knows you. Seats that hug you. A 
ride that spoils you. The next Nissan Maxima, part of the next generation of Nissan thinking. I've trained for this my whole life. I cannot fail. I will not fail because I am one with a can. Dr. Pepper has given you a shot at a million dollars, but first you gotta get past me. Log on to ESPN.com, keyword pepper. Beat me at College Pick'em, and you could be passing for the million live at the Big 12 and ACC Championship game Saturday, December 2nd on ABC. Uh, Rutgers fans thinking about opening game against Illinois last year. Yeah, and, and you know, here's the storyline of this football game. Right here, Ray Rice. Three touchdown runs there, the first of the three. Here, the second, right over that left side of the offensive line, back into the middle of the formation. And right here, the nice little cutback. But then on the North Carolina side of the field, Joe Daly leading his football team. Nice touch over the top to the big-time receiver, Hakeem Nix, who's really stepped up along with Brooks Foster. But right now, riding on the shoulders of that quarterback there, young man Joe Daly, is North Carolina's hopes of winning this football game. Chevrolet players of the game, Ray Rice, 197 yards. Joe Daly, 23 out of 32, 219. North Carolina's got the football. Barrington Edwards is in the backfield. Joe Daly at quarterback will try and engineer a drive. Looking downfield for the long bomb. Big rush. He's shown he can run. Still wants to throw it. Can't. Gets to the 30 and gets out of bounds at the 32 yard line. What I like there, you don't take a chance. The game's on the line. Pretty much you may have, this may be your last possession of this football game. Take care of the football. But Gary, both sides want this situation. Rutgers, they want it because last year's come from behind loss when they lost to Illinois. They want to prove that they can get it done. And North Carolina right now want to prove that with Joe Daly, they can play. Goes over the middle, wide open. That'll take it into Rutgers territory at the 43-yard line. Knicks again. Freshman, 6'1", 210. Boy, is he turned in to an outstanding receiver. Let's check in with John Saunders. John. Gary, just want to show you what happened moments ago. It was Charlie Weiss getting off the bus, leading the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. Up against Georgia Tech. It's coming up at 8. Back to you. 
It is a first down and 10. North Carolina moving it. Joe Daly. Daly out of the shotgun has got four receivers. One setback. Long count. And he's going to scramble. Comes to the near side to the 40. 35 and gets out of bounds at the 33 yard line. I don't know if that was a set play or just a scramble. I'll tell you what, a smart football player, and I got a chance to sit down and talk with Joe Daly yesterday, and the first thing you get from him is just his calmness, and he's showing it on the football field right now. Very reserved, very laid back, doesn't get too excited. You need that from the quarterback position because everybody feeds off that position right there, especially at times like this in a football game. What a statement he's making after having to sit for a year after transferring from Nebraska after being their starter in 2003. It is a first down and 10. Daly at his own four, Daly at the 40 of Rutgers. Ooh, that's the kind of play that got him in trouble. Yeah, it took a Nebraska. shot. He took a shot and then he took a shot because he tried to squeeze one in there to Brooks Foster and a bad decision, but then the defensive back steps up and pops him. Excuse me, William Beckford, the left end steps up and pops him as well so you know you, you try to take a chance there be careful with the football this may be the last drive you have if you're North Carolina he's passed for 270 uh, 272 total yards running and passing today as Daly has been a scrambler all day a second down in 10 now North Carolina and Rutgers territory Barrington Edwards again called on good tackle made at the 28 and a timeout will be immediately called by the Tar Heels Eric Foster for Rutgers on the hit one more timeout remaining for North Carolina this may prove to be the turning point in this game the touchdown that was yeah the touchdown that wasn't the officials actually got it right that's what instant replay for Barrington Edwards here it does not he does not cross the goal line they call this one back and then the fumble here there was no whistle you think that it should have been stopped right there digging it out William Beckford and it gave Rutgers excellent field position now the play selection becomes vital you have worked on this in spring ball and in the fall on these situational and, calls and you hit the nail on the head play selection that last play the draw play to uh, Barrington Edwards nice call on my opinion in my opinion you got a couple of timeouts you get half of it back just a little bit to get yourself in a third down and manageable situation where you still have the entire playbook in which to go to run you can run the football if you want you know and you have another timeout or you can throw the football and come back on fourth down as well so a lot of different options for this North Carolina football team at this stage in the game doesn't look too pressurized down there does it John <laughs> Bunny's making jokes with his staff over there as he's smiling and sometimes you just have a feeling as a coach. It's a good feeling. You know what you can do. You know your offense is on the move. You have the momentum on your sideline. Bunny right there, relaxed as a head football coach. I'm not relaxed up here. I am. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. It is a third down and six, eight out of 12 in third down conversions. Wide side to the far side where they've got two receivers. Two to the near side as well. Daily back. Rush throws it to an interception right into the hands of the Rutgers Manny Collins who gets his second interception today. I don't know where he wanted that football to go well, he, but there was nothing near. He wanted it to go to Barrington Edwards the running back and try to get him matched up on a linebacker and Barrington Edwards looked like he just turned cut his route off. right here. You're going to see him work across the screen and Joe. Daly right there just stop whenever they stop and his zone coverage you're throwing to where you think your receiver or your running back is going to end up through to a spot and in that spot was Manny Collins Manny Collins with the interception had never had one in the previous three years he's got two today and for Daly the interception rises up to bite him again that's what it did to him in Nebraska it has done it to him here and the Rutgers faithful who have hung on are excited again. You know, that's, that's what makes offensive football so special. It takes everybody as a unit working together. You see right there, one piece of the unit doesn't work. You get a guy that pulls up on you, all of a sudden, there's the interception. Now all Rutgers has to do is hang on to the football. They would like for Ray Rice to get the 200 yards as a personal matter. He carries right there. He only needs a couple more. Yes, sir, that was a big play. We're, we agree. Yeah, it was. And I'll tell you what, he stepped in. 
for Jason McCourty, who, like Todd mentioned, injured his right ankle. In comes Manny Collins, and boy, he has made a couple of big plays at the end of this football game to help his Rutgers football team. He needs one more yard for his second career 200-yard rushing football game. That high 217 came against Connecticut. Look at that, 6.6 .6 yards a carry. That's getting it done. Outstanding. So. Rutgers on the verge of picking up the win against North Carolina will face Illinois team them team to beat them in the opener last year. I think there's a little revenge factor going oh, on there big time it yes, ruined indeed. their season. Although as we said Rutgers did make it to a bowl for the uh, first time in 27 years and they're looking to improve on that. I mean that is not enough. There are high expectations in this Rutgers program their athletic director saying look we've been working on this for for eight years yeah. so these expectations are perfectly fine that's what we want and, you know talking to Greg Chiano, the head coach he said he feels that you're headed in the right direction when the players take over the running of the program and he feels that's where they are right now the guys gathering themselves together for summer workouts or being the first on the practice field before the coaches in the spring in the spring that's where Rutgers is headed. They wanted to build on momentum from their first bowl game in 27 years. Guess what? They are riding it into 06 right now. There is Teal. They got their number one quarterback, and it's a matter of making it work. But North Carolina, they ended up missing a bowl game by a loss at the end of the year to Virginia Tech 30 to 3. They ended up 5 and 6, 4 and 4 in the ACC. Both of these teams knew this was one of those games on your schedule, even though it was the first game that you looked at it. Got to have it. Got to have it. If we're going to have a good year. Got to have it. Because North Carolina, Virginia Tech coming in here, then they get an off week with Furman. <laughs> they ought to win that one. But then at Clemson, at Miami, South Florida, bowl team last year, and then on the road to Virginia. Brutal schedule for North Carolina. Rutgers with a football 43 seconds left to go in the football game and uh, that should be a 200 yarder Ray Rice on the carry will get at least a yard of it there North Carolina you see Quentin Pearson number three moving in he wants to keep everybody away don't want any unsportsmanlike calls get up off the football because this one is just about over and for Rutgers they were challenged in this game. Rice has a 200 yard day in the rushing department 201 officially now Teal a real fine job of mixing up the offense he put the ball in the air when he needed to and Rice ran it when he needed well to. we knew Rutgers had speed but what surprised me was the fact that they were able to run the football effectively right at a big defensive front of North Carolina and that's where Ray Rice made his living right in the middle of the football field between the tackles you're not talking about a big guy 5'9 195 pounds but boy was he effective between the tackles this afternoon Teal ends up or has 14 out of 20 for 145 yards in the air and that is what Rutgers had hoped they wanted to have a mixed blended offense here that so you could keep the defenses on called an outstanding game mix in the run with the pass and Mike Teal in my opinion just managed the football game and it was first first start of the 06 year for him a young quarterback who struggled at times last year for this Rutgers football team just go out and manage it and allow your playmakers the Leonard Rice and uh, Clark Harris to make some plays for you and that's just what he did Sean Tucker you throw his name in there as well a couple of big catches on the afternoon from the outside Rice will have some of the gaudiest numbers of anyone this college football weekend and 31 carries 201 yards three TDs and 12 first down carries Rutgers just trying to run it out now North Carolina has used all of their timeouts so Rutgers will begin their season with a victory 21 16 or North Carolina it did not come easy and the big play you, we showed you on the goal line what looked like a North Carolina touchdown reversed by the replay that showed it did not cross the line that's the way it will end yeah, and it just a well played football game on both sidelines and I'll tell you Rutgers just showed some perseverance building on the momentum that uh, that we talked about coming in from last year and North Carolina boy they've got a tough tough road ahead with yes, that schedule they do big star in the field with Todd Harris Todd all right, Gary. Well, San Francisco has Rice Aroni, but the biggest dish in New Jersey is Ray Rice. 201 yards today. Not bad for a kid from New Rochelle. Was the plan coming in here to get you the ball more or Brian Leonard? I mean, we just had a steady game plan. It wasn't just to get me a Brian tomorrow. I guess we were just going with the flow. 
but I'm glad I was able to do what I did. Our team really responded to the pressure they brought us. I mean, but they're a great team, you know what I mean? They got a lot to look forward to in the season, but I think we did a great job today. Last year, you guys to go to a bowl game, the inside.com, you lose to Arizona State. Was that the pinnacle of getting you guys there, or is this just one more game and a step of where you want to be? This is a step where we want to be. We want to keep going. We want to go to another bowl game this year and win one. Congratulations, Ray. Thanks a lot, man. Gary, 201 yards for the young man from New Rochelle. Boy, what? That's his second 200-plus uh, yard game, and he's a star here. Rutgers wins it 21-16. That's our final. On behalf of Andre Ware, Todd Harrison, all of our crew, I'm Gary Thorne. Thanks for joining us from North Carolina. We bid you adieu. This has been a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. Why you always get the front seat? Because I have the higher education. What do you I mean? took honors classes. <laughs> In I I, hey, it's Bobby Bowden. I'm going to touch him. Now would be a good time to have accident forgiveness. I'm still going to touch him. Part of Allstate Your Choice Auto Insurance. Are you in good hands? That wasn't him. Are you still touched him? Nissan Maxima with CVT, part of the next generation of Nissan thinking. Welcome back to our studios here. John Saunders, Craig James, and Doug Flutie. Now, we've watched two of the best teams in the nation today. Some of you saw Ohio State beat Northern Illinois, and of course, Texas beat North Texas. So well, there's something with the Norths going on there. But uh, they look every bit as good as we thought they would. You know, the thing about Ohio State that we were watching for was the defense and how they would play and how the offense would play, but the defense in particular. I know Garrett Wolf had a heck of a day numbers-wise, but Ohio State just just looks good. They looked the part, didn't they, Doug? They, they like did. a team that yeah, deserved to be number one or two. The billing that they got, they are up there. I mean, they really took control of the game right away. No doubt about it. We're the team to be reckoned with. Took it at them. When you look about the Texas Longhorns, how do they look in their first game without Vince Young? <laughs> they won. They did exactly what they were supposed to. You know, the thing about Colt McCoy, he was impressive, but he's got really good players around him. And we've heard that all offseason now. We've talked about don't win the game by yourself, quarterback at Texas, freshman or redshirt freshman. Let the guys around you do it. Three touchdown passes. One was a little shovel pass. One's a little hitch route that Swede takes, breaks a tackle. And go. That's what he's got to do. Get it to his athletes. Let them make plays. All right. There was an upset today, and it's a big one. A team from 1AA, or the subdivision as they call it, 19 to 10 over Colorado. We hope you enjoyed the day. We'll see you at 8 for Notre Dame and Georgia Tech. This has been a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. Sixty-five days ago. They fell from the sky. First came survival. Then, confrontation. This fall, their only hope is each other. Who are you people? We're the good guys. Lost. The brand new season premieres Wednesday, October 4th at 9, 8 central. Only on ABC. Just ahead on ABC 7 News, a baby boy is abandoned at a church on Chicago's south side while the mother may face charges. Hundreds are in the middle of a nearly 50-mile march for immigration rights. And it was a perfect September Saturday in Chicago. But will it last for Labor Day? We'll have the forecast. And in sports, Cubs fans at Wrigley Giants. see Barry Bonds get closer to a record. All that's next on ABC 7 News. Deep for Bonds in a Drop everything. Toyota's nationwide clearance event is on now. Check out the Ruby Tundra Double Cab. And it's a great time to buy the unstoppable Tundra. Right now, get $2.99 a month for 36 months with $6.99 due at signing on Tundra Double Cab. 
or get 2,500 customer cash or 0% APR for 48 months on the rugged Tundra and get 2,000 customer cash on the versatile 4Runner. The clock's ticking. Catch the Toyota Time nationwide clearance event today. Toyota, moving forward. of a secret legacy Sons of Ipswich. granted a world of untold power but this friday have you met chase hey. he just transferred in every power what's happening to us comes with a price what do you want your power you're dead covenant rated pg-13 join the covenant at myspace.com reviews of ben affleck in hollywood land tonight after the late news this is ABC 7 News, Chicago's number one news. A baby boy is abandoned this morning in Chicago. The child was left at a church on the city's south side. Police say it appears the baby is a newborn. Hello, everyone, and thanks for being with us. I'm Karen Jordan. The child was taken to a hospital and is expected to be okay. Now the search is on for the mother who could face charges. ABC 7's Evelyn Holmes is live at the hospital where the baby is being checked out. Evelyn. Well, Karen, representatives from the Department of Children and Family Services are scheduled to come here to check out the baby and then take him into custody. It's all a part of the ongoing criminal investigation that was initiated because the child's parent or parents chose to abandon him at a church and not a safe haven of a fire station, police station, or hospital. Remember, under Illinois law, they could have done so with no questions asked. It's a day Delphine Clark probably will never forget. On her way to work this morning, she made an unexpected discovery on the steps of the Southside Church. I come here and I see this bundle. It was a bundle right here on this step, so I started walking towards this way. I closer I get, the louder the baby got. There was a baby, partially covered with a blanket, face down and screaming. And I'm walking over here and I see this lady. The baby, she called me, she was nervous. It's like, picked up my phone and called 911. Police arrived along with paramedics to rush the child to the hospital. Still had a good length of his umbilical cord um, present, but other than that, acting and uh, looking just like a normal baby boy. Doctors say the baby boy weighs in at just under seven pounds, appears to be Caucasian, Latino, or possibly biracial. Officials estimate he was just 12 hours old when he was illegally abandoned. Police are now looking for his parents. It's a crime what happened today because the baby was left at a church, okay? And that's a crime. The baby has to be left at a police station, firehouse, or hospital. That's the law. It's not the first time a child has been left at St. Michael's Church. Last year, a church usher discovered a baby boy illegally abandoned there. The church's pastor says there should be no rush to judgment. While she didn't keep the letter of the law where she was supposed to take the baby to the police station or to a fire station, she kept the spirit of the law, which is to protect the life of that child. Who child welfare advocates say could face a difficult future because he was not legally abandoned, safe haven of a police station, hospital, or fire station. People are not using a safe haven and instead the baby is found illegally abandoned. That baby is going to be placed into foster care. Now the Save Abandoned Babies Foundation also says that if the baby was legally abandoned at a safe haven, he or she would have been placed with a pre-screened family and then fast-tracked for adoption. At this hour, Chicago Police Department yet to find this child's parents. Reporting live from Advocate Trinity Hospital, Evelyn Holmes, ABC 7 News. Karen, back to you. Okay, Evelyn, thank you. Service on the South Shore train line remains delayed after a derailment early this morning. It happened about 5.30, just west of the town of Pines, Indiana. The South Shore commuter train was headed to Chicago when it clipped a freight train. Nine passengers and three crew members were on board. One passenger was taken to the hospital as a precaution. Service is expected to resume within the hour. There's no word on what caused the derailment. 
Demonstrators on a march for immigration rights are on their second day of a 47-mile walk through the Chicago area today. Their march began yesterday in Chicago's Chinatown neighborhood. It passes through Cicero, Melrose Park, Villa Park, Wheaton, West Chicago, and into Batavia, where it will end on Monday at House Speaker, at House Speaker Dennis Hastert's office. ABC 7's Paul Meinke is live in Villa Park, where the group will spend the night. Paul. Karen, the marchers, who number slightly in excess of 200, though that number has fluctuated greatly, will be spending the night here at the Islamic Foundation in Villa Park before resuming their walk to Batavia tomorrow. They have a collective message, of course, but many individual stories. My name is Teresa Figueroa. Teresa Figueroa is among the marchers today. She's a 51-year-old mother of four who left Mexico for Chicago seven years ago. Her intent, as her husband, was to find a better life for themselves and their now adult children. My, my children were excellent students in Mexico, and I wanted a, uh, a better career for them here in the United States. Teresa acknowledges that she entered the country illegally, but held a steady job as a factory worker for a suburban company. She's paid taxes. She's been active in her church. Two years ago, she was arrested as an illegal alien and now faces deportation. She says she feels she was treated as a criminal and that sending her back to Mexico would be unjust. During a stop on today's march, Teresa's supporters signed petitions urging that the deportation proceedings be stopped. What we're going through, thousands of other people are going through. And that um, if you're not going to do it for somebody elderly like myself, that you do it for, for the youth um, to give them an opportunity. Most of the marchers know it's not likely they'll win an audience with the House Speaker when the marchers reach Batavia. But they believe their message is being sent nonetheless. We want to try to do things the right way. Yes, I might say, yeah, we entered this country without permission, but we're here. This is our country now. We do want to say, you know, we are working, we're paying taxes. I mean, we are uh, abiding citizens. One of the arguments that March organizers say they hope to make to House Speaker Dennis Hastert, whether or not he would agree to meet with them, is that a moratorium be placed on deportations. That's, of course, very significant to people like Teresa Figueroa, but there does not now appear to be the political strength, will, or determination to make that happen. Live in Villa Park, Paul Meinke, ABC 7 News. Karen? All right, Paul, thank you. An Army investigator has recommended the death penalty for four soldiers accused of murdering three men in Iraq. The investigator says he believes the killings were premeditated, warrant the death sentence. The soldiers are all based at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. They say they were ordered to kill all, quote, military age men during a raid last May. The case will be forwarded to Army officials who will decide whether to follow the recommendation. The U.S. military has not executed a soldier since 1960. The number two leader of Al-Qaeda is joined on a new video by a 28-year-old American. We invite all Americans and other unbelievers to Islam. Wherever they are. The man is listed as California native Adam Gadan, who is called Azan the American. He's on the video with Ayman al-Zwahiri, who is Osama bin Laden's deputy. Gadan says the U.S. slaughtered Native Americans, dropped nuclear weapons on Japan, enslaved Africa, and committed atrocities in Afghanistan and Iraq. He appeared in another al-Zwahiri video in July. The FBI, which says Gadan has been an al-Qaeda translator, is looking for him. As many as 40,000 Muslims are in northwest suburban Rosemont for a conference of the nation's largest Muslim organization. The occasion is the 43rd annual Convention of the Islamic Society of North America. One focus of the gathering is the role of Muslims in America. The agenda includes talks, seminars, entertainment, and sales of clothes and other items. A highlight will be an address tonight by for the former president of Iran, Mohammad Khatami. The convention ends tomorrow night. Senator Barack Obama's journey to Africa took him to the country of Chad today. The Illinois Democrat visited a camp where 15,000 Sudanese citizens have taken refuge. They were forced out of their homeland by violent rebel groups. Obama was surrounded by thousands of refugees as he toured the camp. Many asked the senator to help bring the United Nations to their aid. Obama has been touring Africa for more than a week, and he'll fly home to the U.S. tomorrow.
Still to come on ABC 7 News, Ernesto swirls ashore, leaving tens of thousands of people without power across the East Coast. Now the danger of flooding threatening at least six states. Plus, local schools get set for class with the help of a civil rights leader. And we certainly had a nice day today, but could it last through the rest of the Labor Day weekend? I'll have your forecast in just a few minutes. The K&G semi-annual clearance event is on right now. For limited time only, our everyday low prices are even lower. Save on a wide variety of men's and ladies' fashions. But hurry, deals like this won't last for long. K&G Fashion Superstore. For men, for women, for less. I keep putting food out, but they just won't eat. I've got an idea. Wendy Melt. Even burgervores get tired of the same burger. So try the Wendy Melt, a quarter pound of hot and juicy beef with Swiss, sautéed onions, and a thousand island sauce. For the next big thing in burgers, go to Wendy's and do what tastes right. At Jewel, it's the fresh way we pick, cook, bake. The fresh way we help you save. Labor Day picnics call for Welch's green seedless grapes, just 98 cents a pound. Dine on delicious Jewel Blue Ribbon Fresh Cut Filet Mignon, two for $7. And buy five 12 packs or six packs of Pepsi products for $11. Get another Pepsi 12 pack or six pack free. Fresh food, fresh ideas. They're all here, all fresh to your family from Jewel. It's the final Labor Day weekend of the tremendous going out of business sale at Bay Furniture. Mokina, Homewood, Hoffman Estates, Aurora, Lake Zurich, and Merrillville. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, everything must be sold regardless of cost or loss. Living rooms, dining rooms, bedrooms, anything for any room. Fine handmade oriental rugs from around the world. Everything, and I mean everything, is being sacrificed. All six stores must be broom swept empty, right down to the bare walls. After 50 years, Bay Furniture is closing forever. Don't miss the final Labor Day weekend of this phenomenal going out of business sale. The K&G semi-annual clearance event is on right now. For limited time only, our everyday low prices are even lower. Save on a wide variety of men's and ladies' fashions. But hurry, deals like this won't last for long. K&G Fashion Superstore. For men, for women, for less. Tropical storm Ernesto's aftermath is being felt along the east coast. Many are breathing a sigh of relief as the system passes through. Ernesto still left plenty of discomfort and damage, and forecasters say it may cause some more. ABC's Bob Jamison reports. By the time Ernesto passed through the nation's capital, thousands in the city and Maryland suburbs were without power. The same was true across the Potomac in northern Virginia. In all, more than 450,000 homes in the mid-Atlantic states lost power at one time during the storm. And everywhere that there was rain, high winds accompanied it. In Baltimore, 45 mile per hour winds forced officials to close several lanes on the Bay Bridge to Maryland's eastern shore, just as the Labor Day weekend began. The storm soaked Philadelphia and especially southern New Jersey, where more than 50,000 people were still without power Saturday afternoon. But for some, the worst may not be over. In Virginia... A lot of the streams are full, and so we're expecting the, the, uh, there to be additional flooding over the weekend. In North Carolina, the Cape Fear River is expected to crest early Sunday morning. And along the coastlines from Cape May, New Jersey to Montauk, Long Island, Officials fear the combination of high winds and high tides may cause serious beach erosion. Bob Jamison, ABC News, New York. Still ahead, weather is next. And will this mild weather we're having last through Labor Day? Bill Schwartz is up next with the forecast. Later in sports, the White Sox are playing now. And they better win to keep pace with those twins. There are lots of differences between AT&T and cable. You see, what cable calls internet phone is really sending your voice to their internet line. It can go out. You're right. It's not a good thing. But with AT&T phone service... That's not a problem. Not a problem. AT&T service works. That includes when the power's out. Reliability is just one of the reasons that every 11 seconds a customer comes back to AT&T after trying someone else. So why stay with cable? Visit att.com today. AT&T. Your world delivered. Oh, Dave, no, not the hammer. I know you want to hang this stuff, but if you keep putting holes in me, I'm going to need to get spackled. You ever been spackled? Not pretty. So try Command products. They go on easily, hold on strongly, and come off cleanly. 
Command strips come with hooks, poster strips, and now these stylish metal hooks. And no damage to me. <laughs> Who's your wall? You're the wall. Huh? Who's your wall, Dave? You're the wall! Hang it all and save the wall. Command products from 3M. One day, I went to Children's Memorial Hospital. I had a brain tumor. It kept coming back. My doctor wanted to try something new. Intrabeam. He said that it would get rid of the tumor without hurting the rest of me. That was one day in my life. And since then, I've had 1,427 more. Children's Memorial Hospital, where kids come first. As a father, it's incomprehensible to me that some people prey on innocent children. As a governor, one of the most important things I do is to help our police protect our kids. Governor Blagojevich expanded the Amber Alert system, helping save 16 children who've been abducted. He's put high-tech monitoring devices on parole child molesters and increased penalties for Internet predators. Protecting our kids, our values at work. Well, we're joined with Phil, and Phil, nothing to complain about today. It's beautiful. Yeah, it really was. And you know what? It was kind of a surprise, to be honest with you. Mm. All week long, we were worried that Ernesto was going to throw enough moisture back here where it was going to be kind of a gray weekend. But uh, that moisture stayed to our east, and uh, we got to see a lot of sunshine today. The question is, how long will it last? Well, I think tomorrow we should get to see at least a mixture of clouds and sun, so a pretty good day tomorrow. As we head into Monday, a few more clouds and maybe a shower, especially late on Labor Day. But certainly not a washout. No heat waves coming up anytime soon, but uh, we could possibly break 80 degrees along about Thursday. So overall, Sunday looks like the nicer of the two remaining days this weekend. High today made it up to 77, just one degree below normal. Low this morning got down to 57. Right now we are sitting at 73 degrees. We have a north-northeast wind at 8. 72 downtown, New Buffalo 69, Chesterton 70, and up in Zion right now, the temperature stands at 69 degrees. Two systems, this is very interesting. You can see the clouds in eastern Michigan. That's from the remnants of Ernesto. You can see the clouds back to our west. That's the next system that just can't get in here until Ernesto moves out. So Ernesto kind of playing favorites and uh, we're its favorite. We're getting protected by Ernesto, at least for the time being. As far as rain, you can see those showers with that next system. Even though they're in central Iowa, that activity is not going to get in here until probably sometime on Monday. And even then, it'll just be on a scattered basis. Meanwhile, off to the east, there's the heavy rains with Ernesto, now lifting through New York State and into Canada. Throughout much of uh, Ontario, they're seeing what's left of what was once tropical storm Ernesto. Elsewhere across the country, fairly quiet. There's our next system. You can see the swirl right there and a few scattered showers down in southern Oklahoma. So what happens? This moisture lifts to the north. This system stays back to our west until I think about Monday afternoon. That's the best chance for rain, though I think we'll see more clouds. And even by Monday, most of that moisture stays to our west. So not a washout on Monday, but on Labor Day, we could see some showers. So tonight, most clear and comfy, a low inland 54. Here in the city, a low going down to a very pleasant 63. Tomorrow we start with a lot of sunshine and then we'll see some clouds build during the day, but still partly cloudy in the afternoon with a high of 76. As we look ahead to the next seven days, you can see we are expecting more clouds for Monday and especially Tuesday. Few showers possible still on Tuesday. Then we start to warm up. We haven't seen 80s for a while. I think we could do it for Thursday and Friday. And then a cold front moves here through here Friday night, brings us a few showers Friday night into early Saturday. And next weekend, it does look like we'll cool back into the lower 70s. So beautiful today. Beautiful tomorrow and, and not half bad on Labor Day. <laughs> okay, so there's still a chance to get out and do some things yeah. on Monday. Tomorrow looks great. It's Monday, a little dicey, but not terrible. All right, Phil, thank you very you much. Mm -hmm. Dozens of children got geared up for school today. Reverend Al Sharpton joined members of the Rainbow Push Coalition to hand out supplies. The group had 1,300 backpacks filled with pencils, notebooks, and other items. The goal of today's event is to get children, parents, and teachers excited about the start of the new school year. Parents were also asked to sign a pledge to be involved and help their children do well in school. Chicago Public Schools open on Tuesday. Coming up tonight at 10, destructive wildfires out west. The latest on how many homes are threatened. 
Still ahead, sports is next, and the first college football Saturday of the year with Northern Illinois taking on top-ranked Ohio State. The highlights are next. And later, the sights and sounds of Chicago's Jazz Fest. This Labor Day, make the most of your time and save big at Lowe's Big Labor Day event. Right now, special order flooring is 20% off. Get $5 off one gallon or $20 off five gallons of American Tradition paint. Get a free gift card up to $150 when you use Lowe's Consumer Card on major appliances. Put it all on your Lowe's Consumer Credit Card and pay nothing for 12 months on any purchase that totals $299 or more now through September 4th. Hurry in to Lowe's Big Labor Day event. Lowe's, let's build something together. Announcing the Ford Labor Day sales event with the biggest savings of the year. Now until September 5th, get 0% financing for 72 months on 2006 Ford cars, trucks, and SUVs. Plus, get the best powertrain coverage and roadside assistance package of any full-line manufacturer. Save thousands in interest with 0% for 72 months, from 6200 on Fusion to 11400 on F-Series. Come on, baby, let's go. She was here for your chills, for your spills, and for the pressures of life. She's Kate, your pharmacist at Osco. The drugstore you've always wanted on for low prices. For pharmacies close by who need us. And for pharmacists who care, like Kate. Osco Drug. Count on people who care. Mom? I think it's time I got my own cell phone. Phones are expensive. Uh, wouldn't you rather get a tattoo? Dad, I think it's time I got my own cell phone. I think it's time you got a job. Dad, could I have my own cell phone? Worried your kid will run up a huge wireless bill? What? I can't, no, I can't hear you. Introducing Kid Connect from T-Mobile with absolutely no overages ever. Plans starting at just $19.99. T-Mobile, get more. Jeff Sternell with sports, and everybody's excited about college football. It's that time of year again. In DeKalb, though, they might not be too excited, at oh, least after no. this one. <laughs> hey, you play the number one team in the Yeah, they held them under 50 points, all okay, right? So it's, it's not, not that bad. bad. All right. This was the first trip ever to Columbus for Northern Illinois, and the Huskies may want it to be the last trip. The Buckeyes never threatened in this game. Huskies boss Joe Novak knew his guys had to play way over their heads to have any chance in this one. They fell behind in a hurry. The Buckeyes' offense was dazzling. Troy Smith to Teddy Gann, 50. Eight yards. NIU was down a couple of touchdowns, and uh, they were never looking back at that point. Just three minutes later, Smith again, this time to Anthony Gonzalez. Smith threw for 299, three touchdowns. Garrett Wolf, the lone bright spot for the Huskies, 160 yards rushing, 114 receiving, and that touchdown. Northern starts 0 1 as they lose to Ohio State 35 12. Well, so much hype with Notre Dame this season. You can see the second-ranked Irish in their season opener tonight here on ABC7. 7, 7 o'clock start. They play at Georgia Tech. Meanwhile, in Champaign, going on right now, Illinois, Eastern Illinois, just getting underway. In Ann Arbor, Michigan and Vanderbilt, and it's official. Be all right. The Wolverines are pretty good. Chad Henney goes 10 of 22 for two touchdowns. This one into the back of the end zone for Tyler Eckert. He hangs on, and the Wolverines, a winner over Vanderbilt, 27 to 7. Joe Paterno begins his 100th season at Penn State. Not really. It's just 41, but it seems like that long, doesn't it? Anthony Morelli going up top against Akron, and he's got Deion Butler. Penn State zips it shut as they win 34 to 16. Hey, the Bears made 11 more cuts today to get down to the 53 man limits. Among those let go is a former first round pick. Michael Haynes was taken by the Bears in the first round of the 03 draft. He played in 43 games but just never dominated at the defensive end position like the Bears had hoped he would. Injuries held him down to 11 games a year ago. Only nine tackles. Haynes is now gone. Brett Bazinet, Ron Dane, Charles Rogers also cut today. All right, Mark Burley, he has uh, been pretty effective in his last couple of outings. Sox looking for another one tonight against the Kansas City Royals. They started five and a half games back of the Tigers, but even with the Twins in the wild card. I say even 
because that's, well, because the Twins, they had an eye out for the uh, New York Yankees today. That's why, all right? They evened up this wild card race. Justin Morneau, Morneau slices one to left, finds the seats. Twins beat the Yanks 6-1. to one. Now they'll sit back and watch those Sox take on Kansas City. Great day to enjoy the sunshine at Wrigley. Cubs and Giants in the fourth. Barry Bonds. 728 in his career now. Finds the seats in right. Coming off Sean Marshall. Giants led 1-0 in the fifth. Ronnie Sedano lays down an absolutely perfect bunt. No play on Sedano. Derek Lee races home, tying the game at one. Lee, saw, Lee also had a home run. But the Giants put a three spot on the board in the sixth. Moises Alou clobbers one. No questions asked. San Francisco doubles up the Cubs as they win four to two. Ryan Cheverini now with more from Wrigley. Jeff, no other active player in Major League Baseball has more home runs against the Cubs than Barry Bonds, but ironically, today was the first one he hit against the Cubs in more than three years as he inches ever closer to Hank Aaron's record. This guy's one of the greatest of all time. Uh, you just hate that he's marred by what's happening right now, but, I mean, this guy has been great all his life since he's a little kid, so this is, uh, yeah, I appreciate it big time. I just wish he wouldn't do it against us. You had a nice pitch against Barry Bonds. He just went down and got that thing, didn't he? Yeah, he's. I mean, he's a good guy. He makes his adjustments quick, and he he'd seen the spin on the ball and like a, you know, pitch previous to that, and you know he just. You know, he's such a good hitter that he can make an adjustment. So Bonds hits his 20th home run on the year and number 728 for his career, bringing him 27 shy of Hank Aaron's record. At Wrigley Field, Ryan Cheverini, ABC7 News. All right, Ryan, thanks. Briefly, the U.S. beat Argentina at the World Basketball Championships to win bronze. And no tennis at the U.S. Open. Everything washed out. Third round of the PGA's Deutsche Championship outside Boston. Tiger bidding for his fifth straight win. He shoots a one over 72. He's two shots back. Robert Allenby had a round to remember. On the par 3 16th, Allenby needed just one shot to finish the hole. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? Allen B, Justin Rose, tied for the lead with 18 to play tomorrow. Finally, get you back out to Wrigley. Foul pop up behind the play, right? Now, never try and catch with your nachos and cheese, okay? You see, I mean never. It can be awfully messy, not only for you, but those of you around you, and then it takes forever to try and clean up that mess, okay? Use your hands or your glove, okay? Put the nachos down. And those napkins just don't do it. You know, you mentioned Joe Paterno. I thought it was his 103rd season this year. Well, you're close, yes. Yeah, something like that. All right. Guy's been around forever, hasn't he? He sure has. Very successful. All right. Thank you, All Jeff. Right. Well, finally, just as summer is winding down this Labor Day weekend, crowds came out for one more music festival. Irma Thompson headed a jazz trio this afternoon in Grant Park. She's in her 